It's the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, everybody. I'm Chick McGee, and this is my band, the Chick McGee Experience. Hello, ladies. Hello, Mr. McGee. Oh, please, girls. After last night, I preferred if you call me Chick. What? How are you talking about this? Uh, never mind. All right, everybody. Stand back. Time to get ready. Let's get funky. Get freaky. You know that I, I love to sing about that stuff so sweet and nasty. But since I did my last record, I've had the occasional angioplasty. Now, ladies, don't you be concerned. There's no need for mass hysteria. Because when it comes to getting pretty, I've never had a problem in that area. You are a nasty boy. Bring the ladies lots of joy. Biggest stuff we've ever seen. Chick, you are a sex machine. Give me a whiff. Right on. Solid. Still stanky. <laughs> uh, reaching. Reaching. Probing. Probing. Wow. Probing. Probing. Cursing. Cursing. Yeah. I'm jumping. I'm pumping. Is that your leg? I'm humping. Some robots will get out this thing. What's his name? All right, ladies, it's time for the chickster to hit the dance floor. I'll show you the move I taught James Brown back in 63. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. I think I may have hurt myself. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not entirely well, you know. I I feel rather faint. Does anyone have any nitro? <laughs> Can somebody please call 911? <laughs> My chest is beginning to tighten. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, I can't get my breath. <laughs> oh, man. Is it, it's really hot in here. <laughs> Mr. Griswold, this is wonderful, all these musicians. <laughs> but it's really starting to hurt, Mr. Mr. Griswold. He's cranky and whiny. He kisses Tom's hiding. But man doesn't have any shame. What's his name? <laughs> I'm not faking this, you know. Well, now you think it's funny. Not funny. Oh. Yeah, yeah, hilarious. Yeah, I die at the end of that one. Yeah. I wasn't listening. What happened? You weren't listening? Hi, good morning. Welcome to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hey, Chick. Hey, there's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here he is. Well, I'm in good mood. I don't know about you guys. Tom Griswold. Hi, Tommy. Why are you in a good mood? Well, we got some fun stuff coming up. Okay. It's, it's going to be hard to beat. Maybe you got uh, lucky last night or something. Date nine. My, date birthday's, nine. my birthday's coming up. I know. <laughs> You're guaranteed one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, oh now, sorry. Dad, um, now, uh, I opened myself up for that one, certainly. <laughs> It's going to be hard to beat yesterday's big breaking news stories. Oh, boy. Between yeah. Between uh, Mexican television and... Uh, Tory Spelling. Television. Yeah, the uh, the Tory Spelling story is uh, hitting big. I'm sure uh, psychologists all over the world are kind of worrying about what this one is. We should probably explain to Chick he missed this one. I uh, do not know what you're talking about. You're exactly right. Actress Tori Spelling Chick revealed yesterday she cannot defecate alone. Actually, she can't go to the bathroom alone at all, one or two. She hasn't in, what, 18 wow. years 18 or years. She's wow. not gone by herself. Wow, wow. Wee. She admitted she is codependent <laughs> and only went number two in front of her now estranged husband, Dean McDermott. We know why he left. And since they have split, her seven-year-old son, Bo, is now... Is, uh, her, he's been, he's been is drafted her, into her, the yeah. co-pilot, if you will. Right, yeah. huh. right. Oh, yikes. Has huh? to watch his mom poop every day. That's, hmm. uh, that's going to do some Watch, damage. listen, smell, oh. all all of it. And don't discount smell. Wow. Yeah. yeah. yeah don't mention that last. Yeah, I, I mean, what a terrible thing to do to a child. Oh, joke. Yeah. I guess well, the kids, I, I mean, obviously the kids are going to have to be homeschooled now. 
for a couple of reasons. Well, Why? yeah, because she's going to have to go to school to go to the bathroom and get him out of class. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does he have a doctor's appointment? No, no, no. I just have to drop a deuce and I've got to get him. Got to get him in there. Uh, she probably didn't have very a very what we would call normal childhood. No, 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 crazy. No, no. Yeah, a huge mansion, opulence. Uh, yeah. yeah, her yeah, father, weirdos in and out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, her right. father was the producer of what, like uh, everything Every, yeah. in the seventies. Everything. <laughs> okay. right. A lot of bad TV. A lot of bad TV. Fantasy Island, all that kind now, of stuff. When you're with your dogs, do you allow eye contact when they're going, or do you give them their privacy? I give them their privacy. This is also what I'm. They kind don't of, uh, return the favor, by the way. I allow uh, eye contact. Oh, yeah. while they're at. Yeah, active. why not? Yeah, okay. I mean, if they look at me, I'm not going to look away. Really? I, I do. Oh, I, I, I do. Know. Yeah. I, I'm going. But uh, this is your time. Yeah. Enjoy it. I just. I kind of wonder what she does. Is yeah, this, exactly. Does she have to talk to them, or does she insist that they? Right. They look. Uh, oh, they just need to be there, or do they have to be talking? Yes. Yeah. And even, even if you yeah, had sure. this problem, would you tell anyone? Well, that was what we talked about yesterday. Yeah, why yeah. is this a news story? This because would not it was, be... It's, you're right. It shouldn't be news, but it. she may have been reaching out. Like, it was hey, on, uh, no. Does anybody else have this? Sorry. That it kind of on, thing? It was on her podcast, so she's asking for attention. She hmm. didn't have to tell everybody this. You all right over there? Yeah, but that's what one does on a podcast. Skill. They talk about their lives. Yeah, boy, did they ever... They open up a lot. Yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm dealing with a spill over here, sorry. Should I go get you some paper Another? towels? Or? I'm good. <laughs> Do we have anybody who keeps track of the spills that he has over there? This is like at least board. Oh, like the fifth that's one that I'm aware of. That's a big one over there. This is a big one. This yeah. is a big one? Like, do you think Tori... That's a whole cup. ...looks yeah. at her... Do you think her son, much like we were just going to hand Tom some towels, do you think her son is responsible for <laughs> oh. tearing off the toilet paper and handing it to her? He could be. Oh. I don't think I'm so. I'm going to... This is a nine-sheeter. Oh. Uh, what? <laughs> Sheet. 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 Boy, that's a, a difficult word. Uh, I nailed it, too. Good Lord. <laughs> is it bad? Is it bad? Yeah. Oh, but you have oh. dumped the entire uh, contents out. Is it on uh, yeah, the straw. I got caught it. Caught the it. sad part is now Mark's going to have to go back to Starbucks. <laughs> well, he was going to have to go anyway. That's yeah. not sad. Cake pops for all. <laughs> <laughs> we had gunplay in a uh, in a Starbucks uh, drive through actually, uh, involving a former NFL player yesterday. Really? What, are, what are these guys <laughs> doing? Oh, on? What they you guys remember a gentleman by the name of Terrell Suggs? He played linebacker for the Ravens. He was named Defensive Player of the Year uh, Wow! back Man. in 2011. Uh, according to reports, the incident unfolded in a drive through of the uh, Scottsdale, Arizona Starbucks at around 12.30 local time yesterday. Hmm. Officials say Suggs had driven past the ordering speaker. Mm hmm when he put his Range Rover in reverse to try to get back to the speaker, that's when he made contact with another man's vehicle behind him. Oh, right, well. Although there was apparently no damage to the car, cops say both drivers got out of their vehicles and an argument started. <laughs> the two eventually returned to their cars and made their orders, but as Suggs was about to leave the area, he allegedly flipped off the man. Yeah. As you would. And then authorities uh, say that kicked off another verbal exchange. It was during that second wave of arguing that Suggs allegedly flashed his firearm. <sighs> uh, the handgun was not pointed at the victim, but rather just shown to him with his left hand out the driver's side of the vehicle. Hmm, okay. According to uh, documents, the man swore at Suggs before the ex-NFL superstar challenged him to a fight. The Ravens pass rusher allegedly then called the man a a P. Oh yeah, a, a P A cracker. Oh okay, oh. that's a that's a that's got a nice uh, pen pentameter to it. <laughs> yes, and then he says, <laughs> "I'll kill your A B." Okay. As Suggs then pulled out to leave, officials say he flashed the black handgun in his left hand outside the driver's side window. I'll kill your ass. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, I, I don't was know getting... that you can say that when you're actually brandishing. I, I, no. I, 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 <laughs> the, so, but the other guy. Probable. Wait a minute. Mr. Suggs is obviously a very intimidating looking guy. Wouldn't you right away go. Okay, sorry, sir. Well, it, it no. was an unfortunate but, incident. Neither vehicle was injured, but he was trying to get put it in reverse to try to get back to the speaker, and the guy had to see that when his break, when his reverse lights came on. But what if there was somebody behind uh, him? And then, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a whole ball of, yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Sug says, this is his official response, this is a quote. Sug says, I was getting coffee, not looking for trouble, when the man in the other vehicle escalated the situation. Yes. I feared for my safety, not knowing what his intentions were throughout the incident. I was the one who felt in danger. This is what Sug said. That's what sucks. The, the one uh, purportedly with the gun. Yeah. I was fearing I would be followed home and for the safety of my family nearby at my residence. Mm. Oh. That sounds like it was written by an attorney. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, yeah, that's not. Well, I think the, uh, the wording of this, and this is just me being cynical. This is my opinion. Uh, I was fearing for my safety. I think something about that and the stand, my gra- stand your ground law in uh, some of the states... The only that, safety he was worried about was the one on his gun. That warning. That, <laughs> yeah. that wording and that warning has to be in the uh, in the report, I guess, or something. Well, we got some good know. coffee after this. Does yeah. It, does it say if they ordered or not? It doesn't. Oh, it does. uh, you know who I feel That's bad for? That's what you're worried about, the coffee? The guy behind both of them. Hey, yeah. fellas. Yeah, I'm just trying to get to work. Yeah. <laughs> I got a cappuccino time. cooling off in there. <laughs> Guys, I work for DoorDash. They're really waiting on me. I don't think I've ever been around where a gun has been brought out. I don't think that's ever happened to me in my adult life, let alone my... In a threatening manner? That'd my be, teen life, yeah. That would be really... That's got to be uh, terrifying. It is. My dad had a bunch of guns, but that's the only guns I've uh, I, I, I've actually seen Sure, in yeah, yeah. But have you ever backed up at a drive through No. Uh, uh, no, it's almost impossible. Yeah. That's not a, not a smart move. No, it's not. Just go up to the window and order if you're... If you I like have. It. I've gone past the menu and yeah, show, yeah. shown up yeah. at the window. They're yeah. like, yes. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. I totally forgot to... <laughs> I, I've done that many times. Oh. And they just let you order right there, but it was... <laughs> I felt like I'm totally... Idiot. Now, have you ever gone up to the drive-thru, ordered, and then driven off? I have. Forgot yeah. to pick it up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, me oh, yeah. too. That's. And you then have? I, and it, oh, like, yeah. it happened, and then real quickly I went, oh, what the... And I just... I and bet you went in. <laughs> I bet you've done that once a month. I know, but I've done it. A, I did it recently at a Burger King. I don't know what was I was thinking. I you make your order, you go up to the window, and then made, you just keep driving. I forgot to. Yeah, I went up to the thing, went to the microphone, whatever, right. ordered, and then drove off. Yeah, okay. I did it too, and, and I was yep. distracted. At the I time. have never done that. I, I went say. in and I, I go. I, I was just in. The, I'm so sorry. And she was like, "You would be surprised how often this happens." And then, really? and, yes. and then when, yeah, when I went back, the manager was standing there with the bag. This yours? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, smart ass. Give it here. Hi. Uh, you're not that Tom guy. No, no, no. I'm uh, I'm Josh. <laughs> yeah, How are yeah. you? How are you? People mistake us often. Uh, when well, then they went, no, no, no. We know Josh. We, <laughs> you're no Josh. Okay. Uh, well, now, we were talking about the uh, potential mental health of uh, Tori Spelling's kid having to witness her. Mm-hmm. on the can yikes um another cool story from yesterday that a chick that has not heard yet involves the uh the eclipse yeah we'll have to come back with that yeah, it's yeah. A, and it's a good one uh we have to send a, him the video Check yeah it's uh it. we'll we'll grab that video for you turns out it was so popular they're doing it again next week yeah I hope so. The yeah. Eclipse? Yeah. Got to bring it back. Oh, that's yeah. cool. 325. Run it back. Uh, right now, uh, the Bob and Tom Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's uh, a good time to get yourself sorted out for 2024. We've been, uh, what, about a quarter into the year here. Uh, if you uh, want to give yourself in your head a break, how about uh, how about uh, getting a little therapy? And BetterHelp has made it a lot easier to do that. You go to BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. What I'm talking about is uh, doing it online, and I mean doing the therapy online. More than 35,000 therapists are involved in this program. You'll fill out a questionnaire. You'll be matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists, by the way, at any time, no additional charge. And then the therapy itself is done online, so it's a lot more convenient. You don't have to get in your car, drive across town, et cetera, et cetera. You do it in the privacy of wherever you want to be. And you can do it uh, with the camera on, the camera off, like a phone call or uh, the texting back and forth. It's about whatever works best for you. It's about convenience, and also it's about you finding perhaps your social sweet spot, getting yourself feeling better so you can help everybody else out there. BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. Do that today and check it out, and you'll get 10% knocked off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. Get yourself recharged with some therapy. BetterHelp.com slash BT Show and the Bob and Tom Show, sponsored by better help uh, also uh, coming up today some pretty cool stuff happening in the uh, world of news a, a great world record as we get ready for the paris games um, i'm pretty excited about the, the olympics coming up 
And uh, by no, the way, you're a, not. A lot of the athletes are going to be paid this year. Did you're, you know that? You're disgruntled. They're going to get bonuses for track and field. That's Isn't that cool? Oh. I don't yeah. know if it's cool or not, but it's okay. Yeah. yeah. They're going yeah. to They're gonna have to start paying them all then, aren't they? Well, uh, 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 win, place, and show. And, uh, oh, graduated. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's going to be like a horse race, only for people. And I yeah. believe it's, I think technically it's each, the country itself. In other words, if if you're an American sprinter and you win, the, the Americans pay you. Oh, now our taxes are going to this. Oh, God. But I think, uh, I forget what country it is, uh, Siam or something. If you win, you get $800,000. It's crazy. Is Siam a country anymore? Uh, maybe that's not the right no, one. No. Uh, we'll check that when we come back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is Ugg. Uh Again, Bo Burnham is our guest, and he uh, has a uh, little tour going. We'll give you some of those dates in a second. Go ahead, Bo. Every time I go to dinner, seems like I'm getting a little bit thinner. I'll sit down at the breakfast table. I can talk while they're not able. When I look at them, I find there's a single question on their mind. I wish it could go back to the way it was. It's not easy now because yeah. my whole family thinks I'm gay. I guess it's always been that way. Or maybe it's because of the way that I walk makes them think I like boys. Oh my. The goddamn question just won't go away. And I get asked every single day. But the way they ask it is uh, not a disguise. Like, uh, how was your day? Do you like to kiss guys? <laughs> this is the worst, baby. This is my fear. Now their opinions are crystal clear. Because my whole family now is shocked. I'm in the closet and the door is locked. Well, now my glory days are gone. I was John Elway. Now I'm Elton John. Well, my whole family now suspects that watching SpongeBob had side effects. I'm not gay, and that's what I said. If I'm gay, hey, God, strike me dead. <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke. <laughs> Just because I'm afraid of the snow or my favorite color is the rainbow. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> this is the worst, baby. This is my fear. Now their opinions are crystal clear, yeah. Because even my boyfriend thinks I'm gay. I'm just... Oh, God. <laughs> You all probably think I'm gay. Man, this song is counterproductive. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> because my whole family thinks I'm gay. I said, what did they know anyway? You got to look right through the haze. Easy bake oven must just a phase. And my whole family thinks I'm queer. That is all I ever hear. But I've been as straight as a ramp. If you don't count Bible camp, <laughs> Bible camp. I'm not gay, I swear. Kind of. <laughs> as, as, Whoa, Burnham. As, Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. <laughs> That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you.
You know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So that's how you know you're too high. And Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Like <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. Comedian John Campanera, Bob, grew up in Los Angeles. Ben Scully was my man. Is that something that you did? Ben Mike... Scully is funny because he's one of these announcers that loves to read lips. Wait a minute, here comes Tracy out of the dugout. He's <laughs> in the umpire's face. It appears he wants to take the ump to Fuddruckers after the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know what makes me laugh is Skip Carey, mm -hmm. Harry's son. He yeah. does the Atlanta Brave games. Sure. I listen to this guy when I can't sleep. Eh, Chipper Jones takes one on the outside. Three and one on Chipper Jones. <laughs> Don't forget all week long, we got the best of the Duke right here on TBS. <laughs> John Wayne right here on TBS. There's a long fly ball, looks like that's out of here. <laughs> I love that. And you know Harry's going, I can't believe that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Harry would get excited over the dumbest stuff. Hey, check out the kid in the sombrero. <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you. Oh, my God. There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom Radio. Tom Radio. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. All is uh, all is well. Tom has cleaned up his uh, his mess, his uh, full cup spill. Large, uh, eventy, <laughs> amazing oh, iced yeah. coffee spill just everywhere. <laughs> uh, but we're okay now. I got it done. Good. Uh, I, I can't help but notice that. Uh, Josh is in the uh, I hate Steven Singer dot com sidekick chair. Hi there. Uh, oh, getting nice. getting those roses ready for Mother's Day. I'm talking about those gold roses. We'll hear more about that coming up. And of course, Chick McGee is at the OrangeInsoles dot com sports desk. We teased a story that Chick missed yesterday, and I sent him the video during the break. This is the story behind that video, Chick. A Mexican TV station accidentally broadcast images of a man's testicles during their live eclipse coverage. That. That video that I just watched was broadcast on television? Yeah, it sure was. They had asked viewers to uh, send in their videos of the eclipse. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And you can see that in the, the beginning, beginning, it's it's real. Looks so, normal. So whoever was probably frantically editing all these things, so, okay, this looks like a good one, he hits the button and sends it across, but then a what happens? A set of testes dip into the frame, giving viewers a brief close-up view of someone's genitals. And they do block out. The <laughs> sun, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. sure do. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's some high quality photography. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, the guy went to some trouble. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. he took his pants off so he get, wouldn't get pickpocketed. Oh, that's right. He didn't want to get pickpocketed. I, that's, of course, uh, I have not heard about any rash of pickpocketing. No. It's probably because we warned people. I bet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but, yeah, they're quite uh, clearly very hairy testicles. On not, It is not the moon blocking out the sun. They yeah. are adult testicles. That's yeah. uh, certain. Yeah. yeah. And the one is uh, much larger than the other, which is pretty much standard, fellas. So don't be alarmed. I think, uh, I think that's normal, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think uh, yeah. we need to make that clear. No, to, to no. one should not be larger than yeah, the other. That's not normal. That isn't normal? No, one that will hang a little lower than the other. Oh, okay. Wait a minute, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, if you, if you're oh. working with a, uh oh, <laughs> there might be some swelling involved. <laughs> yeah. I better. Right. I don't mean to pass along bad medical there. information. I just thought, yeah. isn't one supposed to be the size of like a, a pool ball, the other size of a ping pong ball? Oh no, that's a problem. Oh, no. oh yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. I better go to a qualified physician, herniated a medical professional, ah. specialist is probably uh, what you're. Um, some training maybe. Uh, Patchy, you got your instruments in there today? Both of them. Okay, yeah. good. Oh, that's good because um, uh, I know that you created a, a totally original song. Uh, with respect to the uh, Tory spelling problem in which she has uh, announced to the world that she insists on uh, having her son in the toilet with her yeah. during uh, both one and two type acts. Uh, this, uh, she says she has not been able to go to the toilet by herself in 18 years. That's right. That's what she a, says. A problem. This is beautiful music. You're yeah, playing yeah, there, Pat. You. Yes. What, what do you got for us, Pat? Oh, I <laughs> I can't believe you're making me sing this again. <laughs> you know, I can't poop without you. Oh, no, yeah. Can't poop without you. I can't dump. I can't crap. Unless you sit on my lap or hold my hand or I can go. Not even a squirt, let alone fill the bowl. Oh. It's me and you as 
as I go number two. I just can't poop without you. <laughs> without you. Oh, thank uh, you very much. Yeah. Uh, uh, classy story. Mm-hmm. Uh, so proud. Uh, that's a very nice. I actually will have to apologize to Mr. Barry Manilow. Thank you, Barry. But, um, yeah, that story was everywhere yesterday. Yeah. Um, so uh, be careful what you say in your podcast. But uh, is she still an active actress? Is she? Not mm-hmm. really. Not really. I haven't seen her in anything. She was nine oh two. She's struggling. Right? Remember that she's been cut off by her mom, and they were living in an RV for a while. She and her kids, and oh. yeah, she's. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Yeah, I was in a motel at one point. Hmm. Like, and I mean a motel, like the old fashioned two story motel. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well. Um, I hope they have nice facilities. Uh, let's uh, turn to the uh, sports desk. Anything of interest going on over there? Uh, well, uh, other than not not happening, but uh, going to happen anyway. The Masters is, uh, of course, uh, more than just the first major of the year. It's the first time they're referring to this as the whole gang getting back together. But the question is for how much longer. There are 13 players from Live Golf who join the rest of the players in the 89-man field at Augusta later this morning. Uh, Masters chairman Fred Ridley is leaning on invitations in his belief they can get the right players to participate and compete at Augusta. He believes the official world golf rankings, they are legitimate. The Masters always reviews that criteria before making their invitations. Ridley did not announce any changes at his news conference yesterday, but for now the focus is on winning a green jacket so we will see what happens at the uh, the masters first round today expected to be rain delayed with thunder showers in the area oh. mm. but uh, uh, the Georgia. rain won't uh, won't delay this a tradition unlike any other oh, 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 God. <laughs> the masturbators <laughs> this weekend on cbs <laughs> thank, you, thank, you, thank you very much uh, <laughs> <Uta Man. laughs> that kind of okay. went away, didn't it? When people hitting a golf shot on the Uta Man, and, wasn't, uh, wasn't it? It's in the hole, and mm-hmm. remember, it was Uta Man for a long time, mm-hmm. and then as soon as they hit it, it's in the hole. Yeah, yeah. that both of those kind of went away. Yeah, I wonder if that was one guy, the Uta Man guy. Was it? Like I don't the, know. Like the guy at the Allman Brothers screaming for whipping post. That guy. Uh, <laughs> you remember that, Tom. Josh? We all, we've all been there. We've yeah. all been there. Yeah. Whip and post at Almond Brothers. One of the great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. It's only 70 years ago. So. <laughs> I was at a Jackson Brown show, and a guy shouted that out, and Jackson went, Are you still here, man? <laughs> it's uh, Phil Maurice. It's a great album. Check it out. <laughs> He's reading a book about the Allman Brothers. Yeah, you? I know. Yeah. We've got to oh, suffer through that. Yeah. 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 Uh, Caitlin Clark got a final chance to say goodbye to Iowa fans yesterday, and uh, there was a gigantic crowd. Of course, she became major college basketball's all-time leading scorer this season on her way to being the consensus national player of the year, honored along with her teammates in the celebration at Iowa's Home Arena commemorating the Hawkeyes' second consecutive national runner-up finish in the NCAA tournament. You all inspired me was the message from Caitlin yesterday to about 8,000 fans at uh, Carver Hawkeye Arena. And um, uh, ticket prices for Indiana Fever games are shooting up, as everyone is certainly expecting that Caitlin will be the first pick from the Indiana Heat and or Indiana Fever, and she'll become a member of the Fever squad here. Cool. Uh, as soon as the uh, draft takes place. Is there still any talk that she might also uh, simultaneously play in the three-on-three league? I'd heard that a couple weeks ago. I Uh, only heard that one time in Ice-T. It was an Ice-T. He got uh, criticized about uh, offering her money. It was $5 million for 10 games. I don't don't think 10 games. Wow. Why the heck would she not do that? No joke. And why would anybody criticize yeah, right. Because he wasn't offering it to everybody. What? Yeah, yeah. You offer big money to you the You asked and star. I told you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because not everybody that plays in the Masters gets a green jacket, right? Right. I mean, you, you can go have your own green jacket made at a local tailor, but it's not the green jacket. Well, ac- equity is all the, qua- uh, the craze these days. As okay. To- all right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, we'll see what happens. Sounds like it's fairly interesting. Um, but speaking of Tom and his love for the Olympics yeah. coming up, we uh, yeah. we have to uh, shift our focus to this now. Stupid world record. A French woman has broken a rope climbing record. 
After climbing to the second floor of the Eiffel Tower, 34-year-old Anouk, A-N-O-U-K, hmm. and I hope they call her Annie or something, right? <laughs> or Nookie, they could call I her Nookie. She, I just hope she lives in northern France. Why is Why? that? And she'd be Anouk of the North. <laughs> oh, a Nanook of the North <laughs> reference. Uh, anyone class? Anyone? Sure, yeah. Her Pat, last name yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, was uh, is Garnier. She climbed 360 feet in 18 minutes. She now holds the record for the highest climb and the highest climb for a female. The previous record for women was held by Danish athlete... Ida Matilda Stinsgard <laughs> after climbing 85 feet up a rope in the Copenhagen Opera House. But this was from the bottom of the Eiffel Tower. And it's pretty cool. She's just climbing right up the center. Everywhere. And is there, a, like, no safety harness? Uh, just free? I think climate? there was a safety harness. Tom maintains that uh, there was no, no safety harness. No, it looks like harness. there's a blue cord attached to her. So if she, oh, okay. if she were to fall. Well, you told me that there wasn't a safety harness. No, I said there was no net that I could see. Uh, well, that's cool. Yeah, it's still pretty cool. I don't. I don't think I could jump up, grab a rope, and just hold on. Uh, let alone I, I could never climb do it. that in high school. <laughs> Did you have to climb the we, rope. We in never high had school? to. It was always the one. There was that one oh, PE yeah. test yeah. every year. You had yes. to do it. Yeah, we that, that was like abandoned by the time I. Oh was yeah, we oh, were some like pr the presidential Pretty fitness cheap. test or something. Yes. Uh, we had those. The but, old rope climb. Yep. Um, yeah, that was it was always fun, but it's hard to do. But she, it's you see her, and she's way up there, and the, the, it's, of course it's in France, so she's smoking a cigarette. I mean, you talk about difficult. That is hard. <laughs> I mean, one hand. <laughs> well, the line in the rope climbing is a lot of legs. People forget that. Yeah, yeah. Don't discount the legs. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. she keeps wrapping it's, her leg around. And, yeah, I think legs and knots are very important. Very important. knots in the in the rope is. Oh, that'd be awesome if you could pre knot the rope. <laughs> I think she might ever. have. Oh, what? There, there might be go. knots in the rope. Um, I don't think so, are there? I don't think so. No, I think she's it's just... Kinda, it's, yeah, she's wrapping her leg around to create she, that. Yeah, yeah. creates a, a step kind of yeah. thing. You ever seen one of those uh, Cirque du Soleil things where they have those long silk Silks, yeah. ropes and they're flipping sure. around and they're way up high? Uh, it's amazing. So, But uh, it's kind of cool getting ready for the games in Paris this summer. Uh, we'll have a story, I think, tomorrow about uh, they paint the how they've changed some of the rules about money at the Olympics for some of the athletes. Which and they're going to paint the Eiffel Tower red for the Olympics. Are they? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes. Interesting. Did you hear about that? I did not. Uh, are you guys finally on to me about lying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Now we are. <laughs> about um, time. Remember how snooty the French were when the Louvre like opened with that triangle? Yeah, they had that uh, the glass pyramid, pyramid yeah. thing. And <laughs> they just couldn't believe how gauche it was and how tacky. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> we have a cool um, museum story in Europe coming up today. I, this story I heard yesterday on the news, it was so incredible about the the worker that... A, a guy who uh, was a maintenance worker at yeah. a major museum when there was no one around <laughs> snuck in his own painting. His own painting and hung it up in the gallery. I love stuff like Good. this. But, yeah. but, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you about it coming yeah, up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what's interesting about the story, I spent 20 minutes this morning trying to find a photograph of the painting... And because the, the story is everywhere, and I found three different versions of the story, none of them have a photograph of the painting. Have you have you been able to find one? I I will find one for you. I okay, bet. well, because th that would be kind of of interest. Sure, it would. He he hung it up in the uh, uh, contemporary art, I believe it was yeah. called gallery, where there was Warhol and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but it's down, by the way, the painting is now down. Oh, this must be, uh, oh yes, this must be a lost Matisse. <laughs> you can tell by the, actually it's the janitor's a-hole. <laughs> it was, it was happened in, in Munich. It's, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll see if we can it. find a copy yeah. of the, of the photograph. Also, we have, uh, speaking of Europe, we have a great story involving a, uh, uh, overdose at an orgy. Oh man, that sounds. Overdose of, uh, <laughs> what? Of uh, uh, ED medication. Oh, no. Yes, and authorities had to be called to wait till you hear who's involved. It's, uh, oh, it's really ugly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all coming up. And uh, one of my favorite stories of the day is an interesting survey about grilled cheese. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, look, it's a, hey, it's a four-hour show. You guys want to contribute? Go ahead. You poor bastard. Everybody, I, boy, I, I'd be hard-pressed to name a person who doesn't care for grilled cheese. Yeah, I didn't until I was an adult. I wouldn't eat it as a kid. That is fascinating. Really? really? I didn't like cheese as a kid. Let, yeah. okay. Let me ask you this. What? Um, to me, uh, grill, I love grilled cheese, but it's, and it's kind of, if you eat in the proper way, it's sort of like eating breakfast cereal. 
where you have the milk and the cereal, and when you run out of milk, you add more cereal and vice versa. What are you adding? Well, uh, with grilled tomato cheese, tomato, tomato soup. Yeah, tomato oh. soup for tomato sure. Tomato soup with grilled cheese. Absolutely. I mean, you could uh, you could just eat all day. You're, dun I agree. you're Duncan. Oh, is that what yeah. you're doing? Yeah. It's, of course. Uh, then nothing is better. But we'll find out about uh, grilled cheese. And an interesting survey, also uh, a fascinating survey about uh, sex partners. <laughs> what country do you think the average person has the most uh, partners throughout the course of their life? France. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. The so nation, not a once, but country lovers. Yeah, France. And we also have a, uh, a, a smaller version of that uh, USA. What you state has the most, uh, the, the person's reporting what? Okay. Which, of course, skews the results. Because I was going to guess the USA for that first question. No. Okay. It is not America. No, no, no. Uh, we're we're going to have to pick up our game, folks. I'm sorry. Yeah. What? Is it a state? What are you saying? States uh, like what? Louisiana or California or Texas. Yeah. Which state uh, the average person claims to have had the most sexual partners oh, in the course of their life? I thought you life? said country. It, he did it I, first, I said, yeah. We have country, then we have it broken down in you to the okay. USA. Okay. So we'll check uh, both those things. Also, important whack-a-mole news. Oh, okay. Issue That's a good game. <laughs> you like issue. the whack-a-mole news? Great deal? game. Mm. You, can't, uh, you can't beat it. A lot of aggression comes out. Oh, no, yeah. you can beat it. That's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good for you. Uh, but right now, we're going to talk about... Uh, Simply Safe, the do-it-yourself, design-it-yourself home security system trusted by experts. Simply Safe named best home security system... For 2024 by U.S. News World Report and Newsweek awarded it Best Customer Service in Home Security. Simply Safe has sensors to detect break-ins, fires, floods, and more, and indoor-outdoor cameras, high-definition cameras to keep watch day and night, backed by 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. And Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can even help stop crime in real time by speaking to intruders through the wireless indoor camera warning them that they're being recorded and police are on their way. No contract and a 60-day money-back guarantee. You can try Simply Safe risk-free. And if you don't love it, which I've never heard of, send the system back for a full refund. Simply Safe has given us and many Bob and Tom Show listeners real peace of mind. And you can have it too and get 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. All you have to do is visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. Get all the details. There's no safe like Simply Safe. When we come back, we will return to the uh, orangeinsoles.com sports desk eh. and uh, see what's going on over there. And uh, we'll check in with uh, Christy Lee and get some songs out of Mr. Godwin. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening. to the wildly successful Mr. Obvious show. <laughs> I'm your host, Mr. Obvious. Let's take a call. Hello, Mr. Obvious show. Uh, hello, is this Mr. Obvious? Speaking. Hi, Mr. Obvious. Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, just want to say, uh, first of all, I really love your show. Really enjoy listening to it. I think you do a great job. Well, kind words indeed. And thank you, caller, for calling the Mr. Uh, Obvious show. No, Mr. Obvious? Yes. Uh, here's my problem. Oh, okay. Well, the thing is, uh, I think I got some kind of animal uh, trapped in my house. Oh, yeah, like a pest problem or something? Yeah, uh, uh -huh. well, it's, it's even bigger than that. Uh, I think it's some kind of critter that's trapped down uh, underneath my sink somewhere. Oh, my. Now, do you live in a rural section of town? Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh, uh -huh. I live on the outskirts of town here. And, uh, well, here's the thing. I think it's caught underneath my sink, and I've opened the doors and, and my cabinets there and looked underneath, and I can't find it anywhere. But I can hear him down there making noise. Oh, you say you got a critter and you can hear him. Now, what what yep. kind of sound does he make, caller? Um, well, it's kind of a growling, kind of a... Uh, well, I'll try to imitate it for you. It's kind of like... <laughs> uh huh. Now, this is under your sink in your kitchen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds like you might be caught down there in the pipes. <laughs> now, this is not uncommon for your uh, rurally located homes to have a raccoon or a possum uh, under the house. Now, but you say he might be stuck in the pipes? Yeah, that's what it seems like. Because, uh, in fact, I think that's how he's living there. Uh, he seems to eat stuff that my wife throws away down the sink after dinner. She'll, <laughs> she'll wash the leftovers down the sink uh, after we get done eating. I think that's what he's eating because I can hear him down there growling and uh, chewing. Huh. What was the sound again, caller? Well, it's uh, she'll put the stuff down there in the sink and run the water, and then uh, you can hear him kind of going, ah, 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 
Like huh. Now, is there anything else that corresponds with the uh, the growling that your wife does there in the kitchen? Huh. Um, well, it, it does seem like uh, it usually happens whenever she tries to turn the light on. <laughs> There's a light switch there. She'll try to turn it on. Uh, uh-huh. thing is, the light don't come on. Um, huh. I, I, I think the light bulb must be burnt out or something, but I can't even find a place to change the light bulb on it. <laughs> anyway, she'll try to turn that light switch on and... Uh, you can hear him down there just um, seem to make him mad as anything. <laughs> uh, this is in the kitchen under the sink, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I, I figure he's caught in the pipes. <laughs> right. So I figured I'd try to get him out of there. Uh-huh. Well, I reached down there with my hands when I heard him growling. Uh-huh. And I mean, that thing about ripped my fingers off. Bit into me. Boy, it hurt. Well, I think I know what your problem is, caller. It's, uh, it's a garbage disposal. So, uh... Uh, is that uh, something something like a raccoon? No, caller. It's uh. No, it's something something littler, like a uh, like a mouse. <laughs> no, caller. It's a machine that's hooked to your uh, your drain pipe there under your sink that chews up uh, uh, food that uh, makes it rinse right down the pipe there. It's an actual machine. It's not an animal at all. Huh. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. I never made the connection. <laughs> get rid of the garbage. There you go. Sounds like a critter. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I know, yeah, it's not a critter. It's a, thanks for calling, though, caller. Mr. Obvious? Yes. You're a lifesaver. Thank you. Uh, that'll do it for this week's show. Uh, thank you, and uh, good luck uh, from everyone here on the Mr. Obvious Show. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. Hi, this is Chick McGee from the Bob and Tom Show. Miss some of the show? Become a Bob and Tom VIP and subscribe to the audio and video podcast. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. Hurdler Klaus Kleinendorfer went on to be a silver medalist for the women's team as Gretchen Kleinendorfer. Oh, thank you very much for this. Uh, oh, I mean, uh, <coughs> thank you for this medal. This has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Sound like Paul Hum at the end. Oh, there you go. Bob and Tom. 24-7. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have uh, Doug Moreland on the line. Doug, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you? Christy. Doug. Okay, your dog's name is Holly, I understand. Holly. Short for Holly Peño. Can we hear her sing? Is that? Yeah, a- just, it's called I Taught My Dog to Say I Love You, and she means it. Okay. Aww. Aww. Well, let's hear it. I taught my dog to say I love you. I love you. I love you. Is there anything it's sweeter <laughs> on the oh, face of the earth? Oh, yes. <laughs> You're a good girl. I love you. I'm on for the Bob and Tom show. Uh oh. I taught my dog. Jeez. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you sure you're not squeezing that dog? <laughs> Jim Gaffigan joins us in the studio. Uh, Jim is a veteran uh, comedian and actor, famous for a couple of oddball appearances on Sex in the City. Uh, oh. But I am an actor and a comedian, but I'll tell you guys, I wish I was a film director just in everyday life. So when someone was telling me a boring story, I could just go, and cut. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't finish. <laughs> 
<laughs> we got it. That's a wrap. <laughs> God. <laughs> when you think about it, that would come in handy. You come home oh, late. God, your wife's yeah. like, where the hell were you? And cut. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try it again. This time you don't care where I was. <laughs> Mac, you're happy to see me. Let's try a topless. Action. <laughs> Bob and Tom. Well, meaning, but. Yeah, they're. there. Go. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're all here. There's Pat Godwin and uh, Josh Arnold, the I Hate Stephen Singer sidekick chair. There's Christy Lee and Ace Cosby. I'm Chick. Here's Tom. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we'll move forward here with uh, interesting things happening. Any luck, uh, Christy, finding out any more about this uh, no. painting in Germany that's become... An employee of a German art museum has been fired for hanging his own painting in the gallery. The museum in Munich confirmed it had fired a member of its technical services team after it was discovered that he had hung his own work in a gallery dedicated to modern and contemporary art, allowing him to share space with pieces by Andy Warhol for an entire day. Yes. German media reported the 51-year-old had smuggled this piece into the museum, quote, in hopes of achieving his artistic breakthrough. Apparently, his artwork was returned to him, but no details of the piece were given by the gallery to avoid encouraging copycat pranksters. So they're not showing the, photo, the actual Yeah, because I couldn't find it anymore. And all they will say is that they left it hanging when they discovered it. They left it hanging for the whole day and did not receive any positive feedback on the oh, particular Did they piece get any negative work. feedback? So they gave well, it a, yeah, exactly. Did anybody notice it? They it, gave it a shot. It does not say whether they got any negative feedback. Yeah, but no. I don't buy I don't buy what they're saying at all. <laughs> because here's the who goes to a museum, looks at a painting and then finds Somebody who, uh, like a supervisor, there. goes, I just want you to know I really enjoyed that painting you right there. You know, you're right. That doesn't <laughs> no, does that. No. Or I just want you to know I really dislike that painting. Yeah, right, right. You no. should go ahead but, and take that. Uh, in the fine print of the story, it says they are coming after the guy for putting holes in the wall. That's right. But they cannot file <laughs> criminal charges, apparently. I That's, applaud him. Yeah. I applaud him. Get it out there. Why not? Yeah. Really? Plus, yes. And yes, absolutely. If Banksy had done it, it would be worth a million dollars. Yeah, exactly. This yeah, museum, yeah. Is, they just feel silly. But they they see what, the, what, the, what if you did it with a sculpture? I'm guessing I know what it would be. <laughs> <laughs> you ever taken a sculpture class the first day they hand out the clay? No, I never have. Yeah, every guy, immediately. <laughs> After five minutes, you just look like this. It's unlikely he'll face any legal action, though his employment was terminated for his misconduct. Well, I say, you know what? You swung for the fences. Good for you. Eh. New well self done. Well done, sir. <laughs> his new self-portrait is entitled, Unemployed. <laughs> uh, well, good luck, sir. Uh, yeah, plus, I just anything that kind of takes the piss out of uh, now, high, high art. Is you're being art. modest. Uh, you're not going to tell your story, Josh? I, uh, About the time you went behind the counter at Jersey Mike's and made your own sub? <sighs> Well, oh you tell my. the person, the, the, you know, uh, he, wow. he was a, a nice young man, but he just couldn't get it. When I say more mayonnaise, <laughs> I just, it's just what it sounds like. Yeah. More mayonnaise. You got to show him. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> Give me that. So you're not a fan of high art. Uh, well, I, no, it's fine, but I, I just like that. I think this. I think what happened is the museum's embarrassed. This guy hung up his painting and no one noticed, good or bad. And they thought. And so, what does that kind of tell you about the art world? Oh, I think it'd well, be would really would be funny, is if they let the public vote on it. Yeah. And yeah. If they, exactly. if they left this up, they'd get a lot more foot traffic this summer. Yeah, you're right. But they, but well, yep. they don't yes. want to encourage copycat people doing this. So well, I, I get that. Again, because it, all it does is point out anybody can make art, and if it's hung in a museum, people are going to treat it differently. That's what. The, that's Remember the guy that nailed the banana to the wall in Miami, and it sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh yeah, I like that guy. Remember the guy who sold nothing. nothing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they do call the people at uh, Subway. I think aren't they sandwich artists? That's exactly something? right, and, yeah. and well named. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. That that's that's some great uh, great art, but. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to see what the painting looked like to see if it matched some of the stuff. Derivative, if you will, of the stuff hanging on the walls. Have you ever looked at a museum and, uh, you're, you know what, I, I'm, yeah, this, all this is fine, 
But then I find, like, if you walk through the halls of a grade school and they hang up that kid art, I look at that four times longer than it. Like, isn't it far more it's interesting? Much more, much more joyful. <laughs> yes, yes yeah. it's way more interesting. Not the bombing of Guernica. <laughs> it's a kid with a kid with a snowman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a difference there. I, Fan of art. You know, I, I love my, I love kids' art. Yeah, yeah I have it's awesome. a, a lot of my kids' art. In fact, most of the art hanging in my house is my kids'. Yeah. Uh, now, did your actually I have shelves? So I did your refrigerator uh, accept a magnet? Yes. Yeah. That could be a problem. I don't have a high end refrigerator. Is I it the high end ones that don't? Yeah. The stainless uh, steel ones. Yeah. Yeah, mine's wood, so it doesn't. Yours is wood. Oh yeah, yours blends in with oh, the, the, the door. Cabinets. The door matches oh, the cabinet. I always, always like those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, but yeah. you're right. Yeah, no magnet though. So yeah, so the the art has to be other places. So you yeah. could put, you could put a nail in. The wall. <laughs> well, <laughs> you could you could hang a, a magnetic board. Wait a second, I, I Christie's uh, Christie's Christie's new new show called Tom's Last Day. <laughs> hey baby, I uh, I hung up that painting that Finn made. Yeah, it's great. No, no, I nailed it to the refrigerator. Ah. Uh, yeah, it's. I, I put it in plastic first. Oh so, yeah. So it won't get sure. mayonnaise on it. Yeah. If the girls are eating sloppily near the fridge. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, we had the, um, uh, was was it the, I'm trying to remember which one it was, the banana guy. Uh, Pat, did you have a song about the banana there was, guy? There was a guy that had a piece of art that was nothing, and he called it I Am. Yeah, that's the oh, one. Oh, that's the Josh one. Josh off so Yeah, much. that's the one that was, and the, the piece of art was nothing, right? It was, yeah, it was right. a sculpture. And, and, and was, Josh gets visibly angry. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a sculpture you couldn't see, feel, touch. Right, it was nothing. It, it, right. And they paid big money for it? Right, oh, yeah. And you have a tribute? The art world's fine most of the time. It's between the lines. <laughs> and the feeling is pretentious. <laughs> yeah. Yes. A banana on a wall shit takes balls. But selling nothing for 18K is senseless. <laughs> I'm a Picasso fan, love Monet. But nowadays the money makes me sore. 18,000, it's just air. Pay the price, and you just think you scored. I am, it's called. <laughs> and nothing's there. And I am sure you've just been robbed and don't even care. I bought it too. Oh, what the heck? I paid for it with an invisible check. <laughs> It'll probably bounce too. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pat. A very, very moving tribute. Uh, so far, we've covered Manilow and Diamond. The biggies. Uh, today. Uh, very, very <laughs> yes. nice. Doc, what do you got coming up, Christy Lee? Uh, coming up, we have Whack-A-Mole, the estate in the news. We have a big story about griddled cheese. And Dramamine is celebrating an anniversary with a very unique, in a very unique way. Oh. I have to get some Dramamine. I'm going to go on that ship. Oh, I'm yeah. worried about it. Don't be worried. It's fine. Have, do you get, did you get seasick? No, not at all. But people that do, they put that little patch on their neck. They're, yeah. They're, they're, oh, all, the, they're uh, all fine. Yeah, what's the, what, that transdermal patch? Mm -hmm. what, what is, yeah. And what's in that? I'm not quite sure. Probably Dramamine, yeah. right? I've heard uh, seasick can be debilitating. It can ruin a trip, Chris. Really? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd worry about it if I were you. <sighs> Doesn't Dramamine sound like the name of a rapper? Kind of. <laughs> hey, man, or somebody that. in the Marvel Universe, maybe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> As a superhero. Yeah. Uh, we'll find out about uh, Dramamine and what they got going on. Also, our big grilled cheese poll coming up. And uh, tattoo news once again. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. I was just talking about things that are disappearing, like the, the sound of a typewriter is going away. I get it. I mean, I understand all this stuff, but like that, that little ding when you pull in the gas station, if you're under a certain age, you have no idea what we're talking about. Right. Now, true. 
Um, just the things. Remember when that, they used to give you all kinds of things when you got gasoline, like glasses? That's what Bill was talking about, yeah. yeah. Incredible stuff. Even, yeah. even albums and stuff like that. I mean, it, it, I guess yeah. I guess if you went to school at a certain age, you wouldn't remember what uh, albums were or certain things. I mean, I, I saw a list of those things the other day with people that have... They're all like, disappearing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Customer know. service? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> non- <laughs> no, no, customer service now is everybody can understand, but nobody can help you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I understand, sir. Yes, I, I, I know. There's nothing we can do. That's mm-hmm. just how... I was on a plane and they had the intercom turned all the way up to like ten, and it's right above me, like blowing yeah. out uh, my eardrum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I asked the stewardess, "I go, is there, any, is there any way you can turn it down?" She's like, "No, nah, I'm sorry, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing we can do." It's like really, <laughs> they installed an intercom at at ten without a volume. There's no yeah. volume. They're gonna listen to it and they're gonna deal with it. That's how uh, we're doing it on this airline. Yeah. Right. And I hate flying. Uh. I hate flying like Nigerians hate spam filters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 Oh. Oh. There's a- I'm not a stripper person. I don't go to strip clubs. Oh, no. no, I don't. I, I just. I know they come to you, right? But, uh, uh-huh. Well, kinda. So how I'm dating a stripper, I don't. I don't understand how that happened. And yeah. it, 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 what happened was, I met her outside of the situation. She's a. She's getting a little older to be that. Mm-hmm. And uh, she said she was a writer. I met her at a social event. She goes, "I'm a writer." And I'm like, mm-hmm. "Well, that's interesting. What do you write about?" She goes, "Well, I write about sex work, being a dominatrix, and stripping." And I'm like, "Why do you write about that?" She goes, "Well, that's what I do." Oh. So somehow or another, I just held on to writer. <laughs> and uh, fascinating so, writer. Yeah, fascinating writer. In case your mother's yeah. still alive and uh, you have yeah. to tell her. See, so, yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah. now I'm I'm am dating a woman who. Uh, you know who does dominatrix work? She mm-hmm. spanks men and and you know, says you know that, that whole thing. And and I'm not into that. That's not my bag. I, right. I just like. It's not like, my scene, baby. Not, it's no. not my no. scene. No. But I I know that if I'm dating her, how am I not going to end up tied to a bed eventually? You how don't am I going to know that? Right, because she's. I'm like, but, well, this is what you do. It's going to be work. I for picture her, you tied to a ceiling fan and her <laughs> saying goodbye. Well, then, hold on, I'm writing that down. No, but here's what I I could see. I go. <laughs> High to ceiling fan. <laughs> Give her a good idea. Yeah. Well, uh-huh. well here's what I know what will happen is I'll end up tied to the bed. I'll be like, oh, no, I don't think I'm good with this. I, and, and she's going to be holding a ball gag saying the safe word is marry me. Mark Merritt is our guest. <laughs> oh, uh, ow. Oh, back. <laughs> Oh, hey, Josh. What's wrong? My back is sore. My legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look. Nothing. Ah, Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, I I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. See you later, buddy. Give it a... Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh, Josh, did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific. <laughs> See you a- later. <laughs> orange insoles. Feel better, do more. There's no way this is real. Oh, no. you don't think she's doing this at all? She's been living in a RV oh, park down by the river. with her five kids. Oh, that was what explains why she hasn't had her nose fixed. What? <laughs> what? Unnecessary <laughs> personal attack. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show. This Weekday is Jimmy Pardo. You are Bob listening Bob to Tom, Bob and Tom Radio. 7. Rick Schrader is our guest. Rick is a, uh, is a newly married new dad. Yes, I have a four-year-old daughter now, which is... She's a doll. Her name's Maya, and she's beautiful. But I, you know, I'll tell you, she's fallen under the sway of the evil purple one. That, uh, uh, you uh-oh. mean? Uh, yes, Barney. <laughs> Barney the dinosaur. Every morning, I love you. Uh, you know, I he make. You know, I haven't digested a breakfast in a year for uh, listening to uh, <laughs> Barney on the uh, and those amazing robot Stepford like children they have surrounding him and the. <laughs> Realistic portrayals of kids. Now, hey, Barney, let's clean our room and then pray. You know, just, <laughs> you know they, they get these kids. You know? <laughs> you know, off the Mouseketeers directly to Barney, and you know, 
that's amazing. If you know, you have a, the kids love Barney. Mm-hmm. They oh, love yeah. him. Oh, which, yeah. You know, which, you know that's going to be the next Waco type disaster. Uh, <laughs> Barney and his followers in a Quonset hut outside <laughs> Dallas. You know, sharing means caring, Billy. So strike the match. <laughs> <laughs> you know, next thing you know, uh, polyurethane Barney suit goes up like Tinder. <laughs> I point this out because I care. (laughs) Bob and Tom. For your information, these are two of the worst kids I have ever encountered in my life. And I worked the state fair. We were stupid before stupid was cool. Joining us in the studio, comedian Mark Eubanks. Did you go to college down in... uh... I went to college in uh, University of West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia. Oh, really? I was a mountaineer. Hmm. Well, why would someone from Florida go to college in West Virginia? Uh, Because you didn't have to be real smart to get into school there. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, showing up got you that piece of paper. (laughs) Valedictorian was a (laughs) (laughs) 2.0. On the breathalyzer. (laughs) (laughs) Nick Griffin's our guest. I'm I'm glad that it... uh... I'm glad everything's okay now. (laughs) Now, are you dating at all? Do you see anyone? No, I don't. I don't. uh, I mean, I, I try. I, you know, they're doing that internet dating, which... Uh, have you tried that? I have tried it, yeah. But but it, I just don't... I don't see a future in it because there's no story if you do get married with your kids. You know, I was checking the box score and then I double-clicked on your mom's head. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. This is Window Nation. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Chicky. I hate Steven Singer's sidekick chair. Yes, thank you. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold. Well, thank you very much. I don't want to scare him into spilling something. Sorry, it's okay. So be careful. One big spill today. We're doing fine now, though. Okay. Uh, let's uh, check in with Christy Lee at the news desk. What else have we missed? Ah, the big question. Which way do you cut your grilled cheese? Okay. First off, though, Josh, there's a new survey out there that reveals just how many grilled cheese sandwiches the average American eats in a year. Do you want to take a guess? Oh, my gosh. Uh, 20. Anybody else want to take a guess? Well, let's say 365 Mm. days in a year. I'm going to say 70. Pat? Uh, I'll go with 55. I haven't had one in years. Um... 12? 36 would be the answer. Okay. <laughs> According to the state-by-state poll commissioned by Pepperidge Farm, the average person eats 36 grilled cheeses per year. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> they know what you've been up to. 45% <laughs> believe the bread-to-cheese ratio is the most important component of a grilled cheese. Yes, sure. When you say the bread and the cheese are the most important components? Well, that's, that's kind that's of what, what they're, they're saying. saying. Well, but those the bread to cheese ratio. No, no, I mean the type the of bread com- and the type of cheese. That's the only well, components, though. True. Well, well if, okay, let's if someone say, asks you to be, uh, which is more important, you're not going to go both. And here, here's <laughs> the deal. Although you would, let's make, let's all agree that when we're talking grilled cheese, we're talking white bread and American cheese. No, that's what this. I agree. No, it's not. What? <laughs> <laughs> the then, top three cheeses were uh, Munster. Mm-hmm. No. Um, uh, Havarti? I'll give him American. There's two others. I use Velveeta. That's considered American. Cheddar? Cheddar's number two. And uh, Swiss. Pepper Jack. Pepper Jack. Okay. Don't care for Pepper Jack. It's sneaky spicy. Don't care for it. (laughs) Oh, really? Sneaky. Butter was the preferred condiment. Some people use mayonnaise to make their grilled cheese. I would obviously never do that, but butter, yes. You You gotta go with butter. You can fry it in a pan and mayonnaise? You put mayonnaise on the bar- uh, bread instead oh, of the butter. I right. suppose you could do that. But we had it. Yeah. 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 Just made that for us. Right. Really. Okay. So how do you cut your grilled cheese? I'm a diagonal man. Anyone? That's the only. Half proper. of those surveyed believe sandwiches should be cut diagonally. Should be. Be- uh, should be more. I way more than half. It should be 100. percent And when you eat them, you uh, you go in point first. Yes. Sure. Into yes. your tomato Absolutely. soup. Absolutely. And that's also the best way to dip it. Mm-hmm. Which leads to the. Importance of having tomato soup at the same time. Right. Do you ever add anything to your grilled cheese? I do. Oh. Like? Hmm? Ham. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, that's not a grilled cheese, then. That's a grilled ham and cheese. I would agree with that, but... You, you, you idiot. (laughs) (laughs) That's a whole different sandwich. Well, 40%. And you missed my earlier point, which was... You know what I like to put on my grilled cheese? (laughs) What? 
Hamburger. <laughs> well, that's a... <laughs> what do you think of that? That's a, a lot of people... No, no, a lot of people will say, hey, that's a cheeseburger <laughs> dipshit. <laughs> but no, uh-uh. You know what I like to add to mine? What? Tomato sauce and pepperoni. Oh, oh well, yeah. that's a pizza. Oh. <laughs> so, so it's a, a toasted cheese pizza. <laughs> now, do you call boy, it toasted oh cheese or grilled cheese? Growing up, I, I called it toasted. That's, that's what my mom is. Always, East Coast all, grill, baby. Always, always said grilled cheese. Yeah, See, always. We, and we always said toasted cheese, even though it was was grilled. Same I here. Don't understand yeah. how that happened, but That's my point about the bread and the cheese was: if you make a a, a a grilled cheese with, say, that delicious Hawaiian bread, yeah, that's some uh, that's too gonna, sweet. Really? Oh no, uh, delicious. Um, Have you ever gotten a grilled cheese at a restaurant and the bread is like an inch and a half thick, and then there's like one little yeah, slice that's of no cheese? Good. That that's the ratio problem. That is a problem. That says here as for what goes into the perfect grilled cheese. Tom was not, uh, uh, he's not in the minority. 40% choose ham, 35% use bacon. And for cheese purists, the states of Alabama, Iowa, Kentucky, Minnesota, Ohio, and Wyoming, on, Wyoming only opt for cheese. No added ham or bacon or even tomato is a big one now no, if you go out. Do you want tomato? No, I don't want tomato on my grilled cheese. I want tomato soup. Yeah. I don't even want that. You yeah, don't, I don't like tomato I don't want that soup? Even. Just I'm not a big tomato soup guy. It's yeah. fine. Uh, grilled but, cheese. Uh, yeah. Grilled cheese is perfect the way it is. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Agree. But no, it's perfect for dipping. It's no, one of the no, only no. dippable sandwiches, maybe like a, uh, one of those roast beef things that has the juice in the side. French dip. You're not, That's yeah, why it's yeah, in the name. <laughs> you're not going to get like a, I'd like, um, I'd like uh, peanut butter and jelly. I like to dip it in my tomato soup. Oh, I dip no. peanut butter and jelly. You dip your peanut butter and jelly? I, I, I have, yeah. In what? Uh, I will dip it in... Uh, Marshmallow cream? You guys aren't... <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. You're not going to care for this. I, I, bet, I bet that's something. Some t I, I, one of my favorite meals is to make a big bowl of clam chowder and, uh, oh, and, and have peanut butter and jelly. And then what I do is I pretty much dip the um, ends of the... What am I trying to... Oh, the crust. The, crust. Thank you. The crust of the peanut butter and jelly. Huh. In, the, in the clam chowder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Delicious. Really? So there's really only remnants of jelly and peanut uh -huh. butter on the bread. Okay. And by that time, your date's already left. I'm not going to watch you eat that. I, that is disgusting. Well, I can't even imagine making <laughs> my date. <laughs> no, honey, I made us pe peanut butter and jelly and some clam chowder. Oh, dig it. Yeah, yeah, you can, be nice. You might be able to taste the oh, lip of the door the soup. <laughs> <laughs> What's for dinner, honey? A bowl of soup, candy bar? Not very colorful. <laughs> <laughs> a bowl of soup and candy bar. Uh, Eat up. Uh, 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 no, Pat, do uh, yes. you have a tribute? <laughs> do you know how I like my grilled cheese? How do you like your grilled cheese? With a crust and sauce. That's oh. how I like it. <laughs> I like the sauce. <laughs> well, I'm hungry and alone. Pick up my phone and order pizza right on the line. I hate pepperoni, don't like anchovy. One that's plain will do just fine. Make it cheesy, <laughs> extra cheesy. And stuff the crust with mozzarella, that will please me. <laughs> this extra weight is here to stay. I'm eating pizza three times a day. Domino's is on its way. So make it cheesy. Do to do, do to do, yeah, goo to do. Mozzarella <laughs> through and through. Oh, do to do, oh, that'll do. Make it cheesy. With sauce and a crust. <laughs> so that's, that's a pizza song. It's a pizza song. Okay, uh, not a grilled cheese. Song. You know what I like with my grilled cheese? That's what you asked me Ham. this morning. <laughs> What's on the list? Ham. And it is. It's a silly question for the list. And it is. Bacon's on the list too. So right. I don't. I don't. Uh. But sometimes there are those fancy grilled cheeses where they add all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Bacon, tomato. Pesto. Uh, I'll, I'll throw it right in the floor. Oh, you don't like... Oh, I like it. I'm not on my grilled cheese. Like grilled cheese is... In the restaurant, would you throw it right on the floor? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then smash it into the ground with my boot. <laughs> and what's the best bread? Oh, that's a good choice. Well, you know, Tom's wonder, got it there. It's the, a wonder, wonder, the Hawaiian bread's no. the best bread. It's overkill. It's a wonder white bread. No. Oh, Hawaiian's too sweet for a grilled cheese. No, that's not true. Well, I, it, a nice sourdough. But I, you yeah, raised sourdough. The, the most important point. You can't, if you have too Brioche. much bread, it ruins the whole experience. Yes. You can't You can't slice the bread too thick. Um, well, we'll have to try very... What do you, no, what do you call a hamburger that's made with regular bread? 
instead of a bun. My mom's out of buns. Yeah, we yeah, uh, my yeah, mom, we, that's what we did. We called that the end of the month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Had to use the heel. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, heel burger. Yeah. Now, old, I love when old guys say a hamburger sandwich. I love when they oh, say yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that. I don't have a hamburger sandwich. I'll put them on English Sometimes muffins. this world goes it's, on. There, there's a name. Fast. There's a place I go to. I forget what they call it, but it's it's a hamburger. It's actually a cheeseburger with a bunch of stuff, but it's on regular bread, and they, they, they have a Frisco melt. A Frisco oh, there you go. That, that's oh, yeah. One of them. Yeah. Like yeah. Texas oh. toast. They like to do that. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, now I'm hungry. Or a patty melt, too. Well, that, those, yeah, there yeah. you go. Patty melt. Oh, these yeah. are all delicious. I'm getting really hungry for yeah, for uh, for breakfast. Where can you get a burger at this time of day? Um, Can't. Well, there are places. We, we know people. Oh. Uh, what, what's coming up in the news, Christy? Uh, well, we have time, actually, if you want to do another story. Okay, here. what do you got? The estate belonging to the inventor of whack a mole going up for sale. A sprawling 211-acre estate at the base of the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina has entered the market for $5.9 million. The property known as Double C, owned by Bob and Joyce Casada, is the most expensive professional equestrian estate in North Carolina. Bob Casada founded Bob Space Racers, which makes arcade as well as amusement park games and is best known for creating whack-a-mole. If at this house... In the front yard, there isn't a gardener with a shovel. <laughs> and all these yeah. moles and ground dogs are popping up out of the ground in different places. And he has to run around and hit them on the head. Here, here. I'm not buying the house. Well, he's, yeah, he, that's why he invented the game. Mm -hmm. Your horse steps in a big mole hole and... Uh, you gotta take it out. Oh, you whack it uh, <laughs> Sicilian style. <laughs> yeah, you gotta. That's you can You, you, you can't have a right. horse with a broken leg. Oh. I, uh, the the whack a mole man. Well, good for him. That's a great game. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Take it very seriously. You do take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do enjoy that. If I take the kids to Chunky Cheese, mm -hmm. I'll be over there. After I show them how it's done with the bowling. Of course. <laughs> the ski ball. Ski ball. Ski Love ball. ski ball. I like that. <laughs> ski ball. Love ski ball. Mm -hmm. Show them how it's done, do you? Have a bag, shoes, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> I take, all six a tiny balls. bag. <laughs> take it, take it, take it very, very, very seriously. Uh, when I say shoes, of course, inside those shoes, I have those orange insoles. So I don't uh, have my all these back problems and knee problems because it all starts with the bottoms of your feet. Right, yeah, Josh? That's exactly right. A lot of times pain, may you may feel it somewhere, but really the issue is elsewhere, and that's the case with a lot of back and hip and knee discomfort. It's probably because your foundation is weak, but it's not your fault, all right? I'm not blaming right. you. I'm blaming that sad, thin liner that came with the shoes you wear. That thing's no good. They're just not helping you out. Who is helping you out? Orangeinsoles.com. If you work on your feet all day, you're putting stress on your body. Orange insoles offer arch support and a deep cup to properly support your heel and your feet and your whole body, helping to alleviate that discomfort. Look, if you had a table that wobbled all the time, you'd do something about it. You may be wobbling, too. Why don't you fix it? That's right. They're great for work boots, sneakers, dress shoes, you name it. And at orangeinsoles.com, you can take their insole quiz. They'll get you set up with exactly the right size and the right depth of cup. Everything you need to get yourself moving and feeling better. And there's no cutting required because these insoles are true to size. So keep those scissors tucked away. Head to orangeinsoles.com today for free shipping. Plus, Orange Insoles come with a 60-day We Want You to Be Happy guarantee. So look, there's nothing to lose here except for that discomfort. That's orangeinsoles.com. Feel better. Do more. Thank you very much. And uh, you are sitting at the orangeinsoles.com sidekick chair. Yes, very proudly. What was the guy's name with the developed whack-a-mole again? Bob Casada. Yeah, he had a much less successful uh, uh, thing that he put together. What was it? Uh, Jack-a-mole. <laughs> Just... <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a... The moles liked it better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was really a... But did they really? <laughs> yeah, the little tweezers. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Pat. Yeah. A, very, a very delicate handwork. Yeah. <laughs> Take out your aggression, but very, very, very carefully. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, this is comedian John Evans, the High Plains... be an usher like at your sister's wedding or something? What was that uh, story? Right, when you come out of boot... First of all, let me just say, I was engaged once, uh -huh. and uh, the girl kept the ring. Oh, no. That was two hours of salary gone! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> no, no, no. When you come out of boot camp, you're ready for anything. I mean, you know what I mean? Outstanding. That's the attitude. Outstanding. That's the Marine Corps. When I came out of boot camp, yeah, my sister got married. She had me seat the people at her wedding. Mm -hmm. They'd come walking up to me in front of the church like, oh, you must be Patricia's brother. Sit down. <laughs> Shut your pie hole. I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> 200 people showed up. I put them all in the same row. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. <laughs> we don't have all day. <laughs> we are totally uncomfortable. Outstanding. <laughs> Shut your cake, holler pie. What do you eat, cake or pie? <laughs> oh, my God. Comedian Greg right. Hunt. Why can't we have single vows? How I, about some single I, vows? Single vows? I vow yeah. to be single. How would Just that work? Vows, you know, do you promise to sit all by yourself in your quiet apartment with your frozen dinner and your stupid pet fish? <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Never have a ride to or from the airport? Yeah! Sign me up! Parked a lot, 88Z, <laughs> schlepping your stuff. But I want to clarify for Christy, because I know Christy's a big Catholic, and I grew up Catholic. I was an altar right. boy as a kid, and yeah. you know, I think Jesus is a great role model, but I mm -hmm. think he's kind of like the popular guy in high school yeah. where everyone says they're his friend, but he wouldn't name you as one of his best friends. Yeah. Like, if you asked him who his best friends were, he'd be like, Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Matt Damon. And he'd be like, what about Mike Birbiglia? He'd be like, I feel like I'd recognize his face if I saw him, but the name doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> Jesus has a lot of Twitter followers, he does. actually. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, mm -hmm. God. You know what? Let me tell you something. I'm going to have a wedding agreement I'm yeah. putting together right now. I've been writing it over here. Uh -huh. The girl's going to have to sign this before I get married. Okay. Well, Number well, one, you know, yeah. at no time will your rear end be wider than your shoulders. <laughs> Okay, number two. Your eyebrows will number two. Normal size, not super skinny or painted on, thus reflecting mental illness. It's all making good sense so far. So far, Three. keep going, uh -huh. We will have a dog for me to play with and for you to care for. Same with children. By the way, Greg is serious about that. He's, I, you you, we have, had, the, we have yeah. had that oh. conversation where you don't say that in joke form. No. You don't do your rah, rah, version <laughs> where you said to me, yeah. I want a girl to marry who who we can get a dog and she'll take care of the dog when I go on the road. And, and that's one of your prerequisites. And pick me up at the airport in your pick SUV. The airport. You've had this conversation. Why limit it to an SUV? Why not a limo? Because you want to drive mm -hmm. it. Limo's a good idea, Bob. <laughs> good idea. I like limos. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Funny. Hard to get through a revolving door. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, see, Barack doesn't have to put up with it. He doesn't. I wish I didn't. I don't understand it. It's like, you, you, do you know who I am? You got two bachelorette parties. You have nowhere else to go than to watch an angry Jew work through his pain. This is what a good. You know, the, your, your, your future husband is across town watching a Vietnamese transvestite pop a ping pong ball out of whatever it is she has down there. Probably getting a disease by proxy.
proximity, uh-huh. and you're here watching me work out my problems with my mother? Oh. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> that is a hell of an act. That is an act. What'd you do, dog? Uh, so I screwed up. You know how too many times I, I say the wrong thing? Yeah. Right. Well, Kathy's into this mail order stuff again. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. She's into this big time. I came home the other day. There was a case of breast enlargement cream on the kitchen table. <laughs> there was? Breast enlargement cream? <laughs> yeah, sitting right there on the table. I said, what the hell is this for? She said she rubs it on her breasts. They get bigger. Uh-huh. I said, just use toilet paper. It's been working on your butt for eight years. <laughs> oh, that was a beautiful Hi, this is Bobcat idea. Goldthwait. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We are here. I have a question. Deal with it. <laughs> yes. Tom, you have those three white dogs. Right. Do you walk them all three at the same time? Very rarely. I was Man, say, I would like, you need to you know? <laughs> have someone video that when you do. Yeah, it's, it's that hard. That would be a trick. So how much weight is that combined? Like uh, like 180 pounds? Uh, oh, no. Yeah, yeah probably yeah, about that. Just no, I, I typically do two at a time. It's hard for me to walk, too. I can imagine. I think it's a law that if you walk three or more dogs at once, you have to wear a shawl. (laughs) (laughs) I think people think I'm a professional dog walker. Hey, how's it going? No, I don't have room for any more. Thank you. uh, Do you take the special one out by yourself? Um, The special one. one The the one that's real scary. One of them doesn't need a leash. But uh, I put her on one anyway, just in case, because she she just gets frightened. But yeah, yeah, no, I um, it depends, just whatever mood I'm in, and whichever one has not pooped in a long, long time. And I go, okay, here's the deal: we're going out, just me and you. I'm going to give you the signal, and then we're going to go right. And you have go, a signal? It doesn't work. Oh. Like you nod your head. Or... I wish I had one. I, if I, that'd be a great invention. Let's just say, like, uh, I'm, I hurry up. Uh, that's my phrase. I go that. poopy. Let's go poopy. And I know that works for you. Yeah. Let's go poopy. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 how about, and how about hurry up? up? I go. Let's go poopy. When I want her that's to poop. Wrong. Doesn't let's go poopy sound like a 1960s let's era film for yes. this? <laughs> Why not fi- uh, film to train your four year old? All right. <laughs> do your dirty, filthy business. How no, about that? Let's go. Poopy. It's potty or poopy. Go potty or poopy. Potty is pee and poopy is poop. But exactly. Poopy, but poopy is potty. Well, sometimes they do both. But I feel bad for you. When I had a dog, I would, so just, I would stand in my backyard and shout, S already! <laughs> <laughs> hey, well. there, my neighbor. Huh? Here he comes. <laughs> just like clockwork. Okay. Quarter after six. <laughs> well, when it's raining, a lot of towels. That's, that's uh, all you need. Yeah. Now, um, oh, what's happening in the world of news? A drama mean is in the news today. They're celebrating their 75th anniversary. I'm a user. Are you? Yeah, on planes and sometimes amusement parks. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. I used to never get airsick until this last time that I was in on, on a plane. I oh. got kind of airsick. Really? Yeah. yeah. Had never, uh, that never happened before. Well, they're releasing a puffer jacket made out of barf bags. Oh, <laughs> Sounds lovely, doesn't well, I, it? <laughs> I hope they're all empty. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. Dramamine calls itself the number one name in motion-related nausea relief, effectively preventing and treating nausea, dizzy, vomiting and queasiness the brand launching a new campaign to honor the barf bag which it says has been made quote all but defunct due to drama means effectiveness in preventing unexpected upchucks <laughs> <laughs> unexpected upchucks as part of the campaign dubbed the last barf bag drama mean commissioned artist jesse bearden to design a puffer jacket using upcycled barf bags Okay, uh, so not recycled. Uh, no. Yeah, these these are just uh, these yeah. have been discarded Upcycled. for uh-huh. one other for some reason or another. The one of a kind <laughs> garment will go on sale April seventeenth with one lucky buyer paying just seven fifty for the jacket. So is it's, it like a raffle? It's not bad. It's kind of cool looking, huh? Um, well, you, say, can you put something in the bags? Like down for I or something? don't. Or can you tell their bags? Yeah. Or? Would you know those were barf yes. bags? Yes. Okay. One of them, for example, says seat occupied. Uh, um, uh, it's p- kind of cool looking when they say puffer jacket. You know, it's got the full, like a down jacket. Yeah, like a big yeah. down jacket. It really isn't that ugly. It's multicolored. Huh. Um, and uh, oh. uh, obviously barf bags okay. are. Um, I'll show it to you guys. You know, quite a variety of art on barf bags. I don't. See, there you go. That's they're it. They're hard to find anymore. Do you see barf bags? And was there barf bags on your plane? 
Yeah, they're right there. They're uh, right I always not. feel like they're always in that. Yeah. Yeah. They're in the they're little. Yeah, I think they always oh. are. Yeah. Hmm. If they're not in there, the guy in, before you yeah. <laughs> used it. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've had to use one. It's no treat. Oh boy. You have? Yeah. Now, do you dispose oh, of it yourself somehow? Or do you hand no, it? No, no. Sadly, you have to. I mean, that's where the yet another difficulty of being a flight attendant is having to deal with that mm. smile on your face. Yeah. Do they have like a wire closure or something on them so they can... Yeah, there was some kind of a sealer twist. thing. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. I forgot. But yeah, I've only had to do it once. I've had to help a child with a, uh, an occasion of all Yeah, man, what are you going to do? Um, but it's kind of a cool jacket. I, they're not manufacturing a lot of them. No, just the one, I guess it's... It's kind of a raffle thing. Yeah, right. Huh. So, uh, good luck, Dram and Mean. And then, Pat, you were saying on the cruise ships, a lot of people are... They have the, uh, the patch, yeah. transdermal patches, and that's kind of a Dramamine type thing. I think so. It must do they, be, Do yeah. they get those before they get on the ships, or do you get them yeah. when you get Yeah, on? they know yeah. ahead of time, of time it may be an issue, and they wear them. So, Christy, you're going on a cruise. You're concerned about... Uh... Yes, because I've never been on a... Well, I've been on one, but it was a long time ago, and it was very short. This is like a 10-day deal, and... Ooh. Yeah, I know. Mykonos, Santorini? Yeah. No, I'm going... With Andy. <laughs> <laughs> it's our honeymoon. Who's this Couldn't great guy it. you've been seeing? Yeah. Who knows? He sounds like a fun guy. Uh, we're going. We saved up. We're going to the Mediterranean. I don't know how lovely. Barcelona to Rome. Yeah. Olive yeah. fields as far as the eye can see. Yeah. So is that are those uh, are the, the whatever those things are those transdermal patches are those prescription or do you just walk in the store and buy them? I think they might be prescription. I'm not sure. My though. girlfriend said I should ask my doctor for them, so I'm assuming they're prescription. Well, I hope you don't get kidnapped. Yeah, that's guys right. Yeah. Rampant Why these days. Why would I get kidnapped? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, always, oh, come on, Americans overseas. It's always, uh, yeah, always Christy, going to be a good problem. news for your husband. I just found up here. Oh, what? if she gets kidnapped, I uh, know they're suppositories. Oh. The uh, drama. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, they, they, those they, are the cram. Yeah, the, the most effective. <laughs> yeah, well, the most effective. Those are those are big. Did wow. you just look that up? <laughs> Cramamine. Is yeah, that that's what right. You yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. if you just look that up, you are my hero. Cramamine. Didn't your father pronounce them dramamine? Dramamine. Son, <laughs> clearly, shoot it to the bleachers. <laughs> shoot it to the. He actually said, that. "Romeo." Uh, well, for us, though, drama mean. No. Well, that's kind of fun. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll get the patch. I got. I'll take one, or you know, be we'll prepared. Talk to a, yeah, talk to a physician, qualified medical professional. I, I have one. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, and I don't think they really have. Suppository drama. Me. I they doubt do. it. I'm yeah, not I using it. So. I, no, I, I take a I, pill. Have you ever been seasick? It, yeah, <laughs> once you're seasick, you go, look, I don't care. Put a softball in there. Anything to get this to go away. I want to get on land. A new global survey reveals the average number of sex partners during a person's life in each country. Speaking of traveling, according to the study from the World Population Review, the five countries with the highest average number of sexual partners are... Number five, South Africa, huh. with 12 and a half. Have you seen those people? They look like they all look like Charlize Theron and Dave Matthews. <laughs> or surprised it isn't 100. Yeah, exactly. You'd think that'd wow. be higher. Number four, Iceland, with 13 partners. Hideous people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're all blonde, right? They got to yeah. stay warm. They're doing okay. it all the time. Yeah. Number three, New Zealand, with 13.2 partners. Uh, number two, Australia, 13.3 partners. Okay. They're beautiful people in Australia, let's face sure, it. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. What is it, the, the old Australian joke? Uh, let's move the furniture because if this is anything like uh, kangaroos, uh, this, <laughs> we're going to need all the room we can get or something. Isn't that? Oh, they help me, isn't I'm not familiar. I, I don't know that joke. I yeah, you know, somebody's been used to banging kangaroos. And oh, I see. <laughs> it. I see. Oh, oh. yeah. The, the, the Australian the Australian uh, yeah. cowboy comes yeah, into yeah, town. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, you better move the furniture. Yeah, something like that. banging know. a kangaroo. Yeah, I, okay, is, good. It was an ostrich. I can't remember. Yeah, we can guess, this yeah. is probably going to surprise you. It sure did me. The number one country with the highest average number of sexual partners. Cleveland. <laughs> Germany. Oh, sorry. Whoops. Turkey with Turkey. 14 and a half partners. Yeah. Wow. All right. But the problem with this survey and almost all of these surveys is it's self reporting. So. Well, how else would that? Well, you're not going to have somebody stand there and follow you around your whole life. <sighs> but I'm saying there are a lot of people that aren't going to answer to the survey, and those uh -huh. that do are going to make stuff up. Uh, so I'm always skeptical of the self-reporting stuff. The United States came in 12th with an average of 10.7 <laughs> well, partners. Well, that's what I'm saying. To, uh, <laughs> you don't have to uh, say uh, 
You don't have to make a, 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 a proclamation as far as what you're skeptical about. You just say, I'm skeptical. Well, I admit people... For whatever the, story... Uh, the doing. average person, according to my survey, is not skeptical enough. The average um, number of sexual partners a person has in the United States varied widely by state. Residents of Louisiana reporting an average of 15.7, whereas people of Utah reported an average of 2.6. Well, yeah. Well, see, that's, Utah, yeah. that's a huge difference. Yeah, that yeah, is a huge but, difference. But you've, you're dealing with a religious state, Of course. Much. It makes sense when there's cultural Mormon, components. Yeah, and, but I'm wondering if they're the only ones telling the truth. <laughs> Who, Utah <laughs> or Louisiana? Utah. Yeah, I don't know. That's it, really interesting to me. That's that's where you really see a, uh, the numbers change. Because the other ones are pretty close. You know, mm -hmm. 14 in Turkey, 13 in South Africa, whatever it is. Whereas you've got that huge disparity between Louisiana and Utah. So it tells you, folks... If you want to go into sexcation, you go to... Uh, Louisiana? Go to New Orleans. Yeah. Well, let's be... Look. <laughs> or Turkey. <laughs> when you count family, Louisiana is <laughs> going to be number one. Let's just... Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay. I see what we have to do now. <laughs> Another apology letter. Now... Some of these are jokes. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what country has the most uh, children per family. Oh, that would be Ireland. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, yeah, Catholic. I, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I, that, no, I'll have to see if I can find an answer to that question. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I did not know that the the Turks were so uh, horny. Randy. Horny. Uh, ra ra Randy. Yeah, yeah. Randy. Is Apparently, Polish are Randy as well because our next story involves a Polish priest who's been sentenced to jail after hosting an orgy. Here's a joke I just wrote. You hear about the Polish priest chick? He's Jewish. <laughs> hey, now. Uh, I think I offended uh, at, at least three. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think I mean, you offended I, me on not any of those things. I think, I think you've offended, let's see, uh, Catholics, uh, those of Polish uh, and, uh, ancestry, and, and, uh, and uh, those of the Jewish faith. Nicely done. <laughs> wow, you got really, that's a, that's really? a big, it's the trifecta. Really something over there. According Josh. to Polish media reports, one of the revelers at this particular orgy had called an ambulance after a male prostitute collapsed at the priest's home and apparently had overdosed on erectile dysfunction Why pills. That boy, oh boy. A lot going on here. Paramedics were re uh, were allegedly refused to entry and were only able to attend to the victim after police were called. The priest referred to as Tomasz Z received a jail sentence of 18 months for sexual offenses, <laughs> supplying of drugs, and failing to provide assistance to a person in danger of loss of life or seriously, or serious, rather, bodily harm. That's real. And he something. was discharged from the clergy, too, by the way. <laughs> oh, obviously. Hmm. Yeah, by the way, the guy that uh, had the ED overdose, uh, his uh, his funeral, the open casket, bottom half of the casket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, I don't think we're getting this close. Wow, this thing, rigor mortis is hitting. <laughs> this baby ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Christ, there wasn't the only thing rising at that party. Oh, I'll tell you what. I, oh, but uh, <laughs> what a, but it does sound like the beginning of a joke, doesn't it? Yeah. You Polish. got a, a, a Polish priest at an orgy? Yeah. yeah. There's nothing good coming out of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the guy got hurt while they were, they were, they were screwing in a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. That's not that's bad. <laughs> when, when we said screw the light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that the classic joke? Sure. Yeah. Oh, God, that is just sad. Well, Very uh, sad. Yeah, okay. Uh, a woman says she shall Christy, know. how many uh, feminists does it take to screw in a light bulb? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How many, oh. Josh? I'm going to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> Two. One to screw it in, the other to make me dinner. <laughs> oh. I Trust me, I cleaned it up. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, no, it's still highly offensive. Oh, oh yeah. You, no, it's, it's, it, sounds kind of, it sounds kind of fun the way you did it. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Cleaning it up really is, doesn't really help anything, does it? <laughs> Not, you've, wait, wait, hang on a second. We got this. So you've offended uh, anyone with any kind of a sensibility. Uh, feminists, uh, those of the Catholic faith, those of the Jewish she faith. Make and uh, who else did we get in there? All, uh, all Polish folks. And let's not forget fans of real comedy. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I often offend them. Seriously that. offended by by that joke. Uh, okay. Um, uh, well, um, we have uh, uh, an interesting thing coming up in the world of uh, tattoo art. We're right now, actually. Uh, oh, I, okay, good. A woman uh, says she shelled out nearly $2,000 to cover up several tattoos 
inked by her drunken friend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can have to do uh, it. I can do it. <laughs> let's do this. Well, let's Woo. kick back to a night in 2020 <laughs> when an inebriated Natalie Renee brought out a $60 tattoo kit she'd oh. ordered on Amazon. There nice right there. How is that even legal? I don't know. Well, I'm sure it's not. And allowed her friend to tattoo her. The 35-year-old law student reported that, quote, really kicked in the following morning. One of reality. the tattoos. Oh, reality, sorry. Kicked in the following morning. <laughs> one of the tattoos was meant to be a love heart with an arrow through it. Mm-hmm. But it ended up looking like a hairy penis. A hairy penis. <laughs> After living with the inadvertently X-rated tattoos for years, Ms. Renee spent about $1,700 to have them professionally covered up. Wow. Uh, as opposed to removed. I mean, how do you... Oh, there you go. Look at that. Mm. Yeah, that's lovely. Mm. It is sort of penile. Uh, that... Oh, by gosh, it does. Yeah. Because there's like... Yeah. Uh, there's nothing about that that you looks like the, a heart. You got the testicles there? Well, the heart would be where the testicles, yeah. it's the arrow going through it. You see, oh, like that's, I mean, I you could it. always, okay. you, yeah. you could try to pass it off to your yeah. friends as a, uh, this is a uh, fertility symbol of my tribe. <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, really, what tribe are you? Us, uh, Starbucks. <laughs> uh, we, uh, hmm. yeah, that's oh, pathetic. Look at that. Um, I wonder what Next to a got. coffee mug that has Lucky 13 on it. <laughs> <laughs> not not really, ma'am. You seem to... Do Who is surprised if you, you have a drunk friend tattooing you with a home tattoo? Uh, the, I, it looks like they just took a... The kit must just be a pin. Yeah. And you just poke the skin and rub. So it's prison tattoo style, essentially. Sure. Yeah. Well, it looks it's got like. that coloring to it also. I wonder what she got covered up. I wonder what she put over it. Oh. I'll have to figure I'm it out. I'm with stupid out. pointing at her face. <laughs> I, hey, wow. I'm with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you're dumb enough or drunk enough to say, I have an idea, why don't you give me, do, a, do me a tattoo? Come on. What do you expect you're going to get? <laughs> tattoo? If, there should be like a breathalyzer lock on the home tattoo box. There shouldn't <laughs> be a home tattoo kit. Come on. Well, maybe a lot of uh, great tattoo artists started out that way. Yeah. I thought you had to have a license to be able to tattoo. They say that about everything. <laughs> yeah. Driving. Yeah. 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 Neurosurgery. Yeah. There's people driving right now listening to the show. They've uh, never had a driver's right. license. And they're doing great. And they're uh, fine. Uh, yeah. And maybe tattooing in the back of a moving car. Damn right. Yeah. Talk about thrilling. Hepatitis. <laughs> Hepatitis schmepatitis. Uh, this needle, we used it last week. It's got to be clean. Oh, it's unbelievable. Thrilling. Wow. Um, now, uh. Uh, uh, Pat, are you still going to get that tattoo taken off? I, I want to, yeah. It's expensive, though. Holy shit. How much does it cost to take that off? I don't know. Je uh, Jess was telling me it was pretty expensive. It is pricey and right? it is painful. You Ooh. can get a beginning tattoo kit on Amazon for under 40 bucks. That's that's crazy. That is alarming. Yes. <laughs> It's got the, oh my goodness, okay. I mean, is it tattoo just a, a, a needle and ink? It's got a tattoo gun, cartridges, needles, ink. Oh, it does come with gloves, at least. Oh, <laughs> great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there some kind of a health warning with this thing? I would hope. I would, oh, I can't, I'm, I'm uh, flabbergasted. Astounding. I had no idea you could do this. Let's do it. Let's just order one and just give each other tattoos one morning. Now we've I got a show. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I will, uh. Observe. <laughs> no, you're going to be first, pal. No. And no, you're going to put chick on your forehead. Complete tattoo kit, rotary tattoo machine for beginners and artists. All uh, right. You know what? Beginner. I don't want a beginning tattoo artist. No, but they got to train. Maybe they practice on like hams. <laughs> yeah, what do they that practice work? on? I don't, I don't know. Like I, a pig skin or yeah, something, I, maybe? I wonder, is it like uh, barber colleges? Right. Where if you want a tattoo, you can go down to the tattoo school and, well, it's his first one. Let's maybe not do the forehead. I, man, I tell you what, every barber college, I, and I've been to a handful because they, they cost like six bucks. The best haircuts I've ever had because they're really trying. Do you remember really my, my unfortunate barber college story? I don't. Oh. No. <laughs> we were having uh, some Christmas lights put up, and I had not been part of the procedure. The, the the ordering or anything else. So yeah. because of that, of course, right away, it, it, it had suffered. <laughs> so no, 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 no. They no, no, I understand what you're trying I, to say. I, uh, so I was at I was actually um, at the house doing something in the garage, and this uh, van pulls up, and these uh, six college kids get out, and they start putting the lights up. Mm. And I walked in. I started talking to these guys, real nice guys. Yeah. And um, uh, 
I said, uh, 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 I'm not sure where the lights go. I had not been part of the thing, and I wanted to make sure they put them on the proper trees. I have a number of trees in my front yard. And uh, so one of the kids comes and goes, hey, listen, I, where, does the, where do these go? And I said, I just don't know. <laughs> and, I, and then I, I said, uh, if I F this up, you know, trying to be hip, you know. Sure, sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. To, the, to the young. If I F this up, I'm, you know. I'm effing effed or whatever. Right. It was very, Whoa. very, very salty because they're college kids. Right. 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 Oh, me yeah. trying to relate. Sure, yeah. And then uh, I said, uh, now, do you guys all go to the same school? And uh, I'm kind of hard of hearing after wearing headphones all these years. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And the, the kid said, uh, yeah, we all go to the same barber college. Hmm. And I said, wow, that's cool. Do you cut each other's hair? And then they looked at me like, What? <laughs> I said, well, you know, since you go to the same barber college. And he goes, no, we go to the same Bible college. Oh. Ah. <laughs> so then, then I, then, and I later went up to them individually and apologized for my salty language. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, you've been cussing the whole yeah, time. I'm not yeah. Every word of that is true. Yep. You must have been embarrassed. Oh, I felt bad for him. They did yeah. a nice, the, the fellas did a nice job. All right. Good. Uh, Merry, Merry Christmas. Uh, When we come back, what do we have over there, Christy? Uh, When we come back, we're going to talk about cherry trees, something pretty and sweet. That's a big story. They're tearing all those cherry trees out in D.C. No kidding. Tearing them up, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you'll find out what's going to happen. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show. I watch a lot of news. Uh, by the way, my favorite news channel is CNN Headline News is it? because uh, there's no there's no segue between stories. They nope. go from polar opposite A to B <laughs> with nothing in between. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what the future looks like with a nuclear North Korea. <laughs> Coming up next, a boy in Pittsburgh collects nickels. <laughs> like the news for people with ADD. We're all going to die. Hey, a horsey. <laughs> Squirrel. <I'm gonna laughs> but these are some news stories that I, uh, can, uh, I, uh, I noticed over the past... Uh, several weeks. Can mm-hmm. I, can sure. I share some? Sure. Uh, a woman in England pled guilty to disturbing the peace with her noisy lovemaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, she said guilty, but you could totally tell she was faking it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure. A company in Ireland created the world's first ever uh, green technology vibrator mm-hmm. that's powered by winding it up. Mm-hmm. Which means basically, it's a jack in the box. (laughs) 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 Technically, it is. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Sesame Street turned 40 years old. Last year, which you could tell because uh, Big Bird uh, got an earring and a Corvette. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. It is a nice neighborhood, um, but uh, you know there are we're we're on uh, like uh, the backside of the South Pasadena, so, mm-hmm. close, so it, although it's nice, there we're a little. The crime starts just to the other side of us, and uh, we had a uh, we had some police activity in our neighborhood not too long ago, I see. and uh, obviously 
a little scary. I'm supposed to be the defender of the home. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently with a vitamin D deficiency, it does take a little bit uh -huh. of the edge off your confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if someone breaks in your house, you know, when your first concern is not the burglar, but did he leave the front door open so a strong wind could snap you like peanut brittle? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I understand. But a buddy of mine, someone broke into his house, and he he did not react the way he thought he was going to. He did what did he do? Well, he, what he did was he hid. Oh, oh really? And yeah, and so now he got terrified. He wants to buy a gun to defend his home, and he's never used a gun before in his life. And uh -oh. I was trying to convince him. I said, you don't need a gun to defend your home. You're not a gun guy. What you need is a baseball bat. Yeah. The baseball bat is the perfect home defense weapon because sure. any idiot can swing a baseball bat because yeah. you don't have to be baseball good. You just have to be pinata good is all yes. you have to that's be. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Point, as a matter of right. fact, the more spastic and unstable you are, the deadlier you appear to the intruder. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. A gun in and of itself is a dangerous weapon. You could be handling a gun and accidentally shoot yourself, but no one has ever been cleaning a baseball bat bat and accidentally beat themselves to death. <laughs> true enough. As that does true. happen, that's an acceptable loss. Let that man go. Yes. <laughs> that's very true. Now, in my <laughs> fantasy of, you know, uh, defending the home, is usually I'm kicking some serious butt, and then there's usually like a catchy phrase at the end, uh -huh. tag it with something. Even if the guy's got his foot on my chest, yeah. I'll look up at him and say, well, 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 I guess that was easier than even you anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. James P. Connolly. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom Show. Miss some of the show? Become a Bob and Tom VIP and subscribe to the audio and video podcasts. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. Organizers were applauded for their support of people with disabilities. Fans and critics alike agreed that a stage 12 feet off the ground was a particularly bad idea. A little help now. This has been Great Moments in NFL History. Oh. You don't say we didn't warn you. I'm warning you. There's laughter ahead. I should be having a better time <laughs> if this is a part. This is Bob and Tom Radio. Radio. We're talking about uh, those encounters that you have and what uh, things are spoken. We've heard, for example, this morning, Jake, you want to review a couple of um, Choke me, you dirty bastard. I'm going to be going like a freight train. Uh, uh, the other one woman screeched like an owl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's go to line one. Okay. Morning, Bob and Tom show. Hello. Hi, who's this? This is Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Hi. Uh, what have you heard or said, Jenny? What have I heard? I've heard, uh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Could you do that again, Jenny? That made my morning. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm talking, talking about. about. I need that yep. isolated for my sports intro. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That is so funny. Do it again. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, let's say, Jenny. A thought from Paul Gilmartin. Down the elevator shaft they plunged, hurtling towards their death. <laughs> their faces drawn by Edvard Monk. They smelled the devil's breath. <laughs> Your tongue, she said at number three. Let me see its size. He grinned and licked his forehead. She buckled at the thighs. <laughs> the impact satisfied them both. Police were left some clues. A smiling woman all alone in a stranger's pair of shoes. <laughs> Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh. Guarantee. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, Tom. <laughs> Hello, Chick. There he uh, is. Thank you, Christy, for uh, <laughs> laughing at that. Uh, now, um, we have to uh, catch up with a few things. And I know we have a very special visitor, oh, I've been do? told. Uh, oh, there we go, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's Ed Septic. <laughs> That's right. I'm the number two uh, plumber in the tri-state area, Mr. Ed Septic. <laughs> I'll root your lines, I'll snake your drains, I'll scope your pipes, but I'll never, ever, ever bang your wife. <laughs> ah, good man. Uh, how are you guys doing? I'm going on Shark Tank here in a couple weeks to pitch a new product. Oh, I was oh. wondering if I could run it by you guys first. Maybe sure. maybe you guys want, might even want to invest. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Would you mind me running my little pitch by you? Sure. Go ahead. Hi, sharks. Do you <laughs> like a white smile and a clean toilet? Oh. Yeah. Who doesn't? As an eight thermos a day coffee drinker, my teeth were starting to get pretty rough. But then one day while I was out on a plumbing call, shoulders deep in the Clemens family commode fishing out a Barbie and Ken doll. 
I caught a glimpse of my yellow teeth and the reflection of their pristine white bowl, and that's when it hit me. I should combine my love of clean teeth and even cleaner toilets. So I went out to my shop here, and I invented the first and only two-for-one tooth whitening and toilet cleansing <laughs> product on the market today, uh -huh. Ed Septic's Tooth and Toilet Whitening Gel. Nice. <laughs> Each Ed Septic Tooth and Toilet Whitening Kit contains a 40-ounce bottle of the tooth and whitening gel <laughs> and a one-size-fits-all dental tray. <laughs> and a toothbrush. It's super easy to use. Just apply some tooth whitening gel into your dental tray, shove it in your mouth for 30 minutes, rinse, repeat, hit it with the toilet brush, and you're good to go. A smile you're proud of. My tooth whitening gel is 92% bleach and 8% peroxide. So you know those whiteners are going to be extra pearly white. I will admit, some consumers have complained of third-degree chemical burns and poisoning, to which I respond, do you want your teeth as white as a urinal or not? <laughs> Listen, I don't guarantee my product's safe. I just guarantee it works. From sharks, I'm asking for 40 bucks for a 10% stake in Ed Septic's tooth and teeth whitening gel. Wow. I plan to use some of that money to buy an actual label for my bottle. Uh -huh. <laughs> the rest I'll probably invest in Bitcoin. Yeah. I like to tell people, with my gel, if your tooths or toilet got any water, they'd be dancing in the lawn at a Dave Matthews concert. Yeah. Now that's what? <laughs> All right, Shark, so who wants to help me revolutionize the teeth and toilet whitening world of tomorrow? <laughs> oh, this sounds good. Oh, boy, I'm in for uh, 40. Yeah, it sounds good, well, but I think I'm oh. going to pass. Yeah. Oh, man. Really? <laughs> I can't make a better offer than Tom, so I'm out. <laughs> oh. uh, would you guys, would you ever think of comboing, Josh? Maybe you and Tom could go in together, 20 each, because oh, yeah. I like what you bring to the table. Uh, I do have a social media presence. You know yeah. what? Hey, yeah, I'm but we're going to need uh, 20, 20 each, uh, but uh, we're each going to need 5%. Wait. <laughs> I'm not sure how that math works out, yeah, but right. it sounds like a deal to me. Yeah. All right. Be sure to pick up your antiseptics, teeth, and toilet whitening gels today. Woo! You're a good man. We're, we're going to make a lot of money. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Remember, it's only, what is it, 10% peroxide and 90% bleach? <laughs> I don't see any problems with that. It's 92 and 8. Actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. I probably forgot the numbers. The ratio is probably very delicate and very important. Now, um, we were talking about tattooing. We had yeah. a new story about a woman who i didn't know you could get this the, the, she b bought a home tattoo kit i didn't know you could do that either and, for under uh, 50 we have bucks. since we have since found them on amazon God. very cheap and uh, she had one of her drunken friends apparently uh yeah. put a tattoo in her arm that she said looked like a hairy male member which it did uh now pat uh is in the in the performance room there and uh, pat you do have a, a couple of tattoos including I one do. yeah that you've had covered up. Mm -hmm. It's like a big blotch on your arm. It, yeah, it was the name of a former uh, Kim, yeah. lady friend. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, uh, you have a <laughs> song about that? I'm not sure. No, no, this is called Kitty Cat Tattoo. It's a fable. It's a tale. Uh, and uh, if I were to do it live, I would say a slang word for uh, ah. breasts, but I'm not going to do that here. I'll just pause. And okay. Kinda, okay. 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 Here we go. Here we go. Oh, she came from the bar just the other night. Bless you, Josh. She came from the bar just the other night. Straight to the parlor, she was feeling all right. She said, hey there, tattoo man. I need a tattoo as fast as you can. I want a cat on the left, a kitty on the right. Oh, my boyfriend and I had one hell of a fight. Yeah, what's a poor a girl to do? She got a kitty cat. Tattoo. It was sweet revenge inked on her chest. Her boyfriend hates tattoos. She confessed. They broke up and she got a kitty and a cat. Red and blue for tat. They sure look cool. You know it's true. You're going to want to get a kitty cat tattoo too. Then she got a ER tattoo down below her kitties. For those southern nights and redneck boys, she got big <laughs> now, she has, now she has the kitty and the cat, the he and haw. Yeah, what a sight. I can't believe what I saw. Two big old tats, red and blue, and a hee-haw on her hoochie-coo. She got a hee-haw, hoo-haw, kitty cat tattoo. She got a kitty cat tattoo, one bigger than the other one. Hell of a view. She got a hee-haw on her hoochie-coo. She got a hee-haw, hoo-haw, kitty cat tattoo. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Home tattoo kit. What a bad idea. Right? 
<laughs> I wonder how many they sell. Mm. Yeah. They must do pretty well, right? Somebody <laughs> has to be buying them. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine parents are buying them for their kids. <laughs> And it's really funny because if you look at the ad, they show these beautiful, gorgeous, colorful tattoos that you know are done right. by a professional, not by the home tattoo kit. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Have we found out how tattoo artists develop their trade? Do they? Is there I'm like? I'm sure a, there's somebody out there that's listening that's a tattoo artist that could sure. call and let it's us know. It's got to be pretty scary doing your first one. I would think. Is Maybe. there a school you go to? Like I'm sure, yeah. Well, tattoo college, uh, or you apprentice, I would imagine with a with, yeah. a, with a with a fine tattoo artist. But yeah, I, I would uh, not absolutely you. recommend you going to a uh, the home tattoo route. Oh yeah, tattoo university, tattoo, tattoo yeah. you, yeah. Oh. Ah, maybe okay. it's part of an art school or something. Could I don't be, know. could be. Uh, now, um, we uh, have a, a special treat coming up. We're going to talk with comedian Al Jackson. Willie G, I understand, will be weighing in right. a little bit later on this morning. We have uh, horse news and uh, cannonball news. Cannonball. Not, not, that, not the cannonball jumping into a pool. Cannonball but real, coming. Real cannonballs oh. up, coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Get a look at today's show on our YouTube channel. Josh, what's wrong? And my back is sore, my legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look, nothing. Ah, uh, Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. All see right. you later, buddy. Give it a... Oh. Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh, Josh, did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific. <laughs> See me. you later. <laughs> orange insoles. Feel better, do more. Let me, uh, let me see this uh, pair of panties with uh, well, it looks like the a, cushion. Yeah, see, and it's, Is it a regular pair of panties? God. Oh, look oh, at that. Four yeah. of us could fit in these. <laughs> Should I try these on? Can we see your butt right now? I mean. <laughs> sure, Bob. Well, I want to see the before and after. Well, well, I can't. well she's in a skirt, though. You really uh, can't. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm, okay. Uh, Do you have monitors? monitors? No, I don't have them on. Well, that's uh, really uh, <laughs> rude. <laughs> wow, that's, that's your big ass. <laughs> wow. Look at this. <laughs> Nipper uh, attack! <laughs> like, I Nipper! Kill! Kill him! Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Get him, Do Nipper! Do you have them on? No, your ass looks very nice. You don't need to put them on. That's not what you said. That's not what you said. No, I yeah, didn't see you. She had a big ass. No. All right, we need a before of Christie's butt. Take as long as you like, Dean. <laughs> Come on. Come on, smile. Uh -huh. Now, do you just put them on? Are you going to put them on? Can you... Oh, remember, uh, can, uh, Christy, the padding, right the padding goes in the back yeah. now. Remember, sure that, right. just like pant. Oh, oh, she's, she's gonna slipping them right on. So, trick. Okay, oh, wait a second. On. No, she's slipping them on. She has trick. a skirt on, so she can just put them right on. I didn't know we were okay. Dean, get some of that while you're at. Come on, Dean. You're not wearing... Come on, Dean. Are you wearing hose? Come on, what are you, queer, Dean? You're not, wearing, you you're not wearing hose, are you? <laughs> Women don't wear hose. No, are you wearing, but you're, are you wearing traditional panties right now? Yeah, boring. Okay. It's Friday, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just boring, ugly. Mm -hmm. No, no, I mean, do you, but you do have panties on because those, yes. have, those okay. haven't been laundered. You might get some. So do you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dean. Make love to the camera, Christy. Go for it. Okay, now she's, now she's Dean, slipping. you can't. Could you, could you, <laughs> get, let's allow a little bit of dignity. <laughs> Christy, Christy Lee is now slipping on the, um, the booty pop okay, panty right. augment. Or, uh, what does it say in the on the? Okay. Okay. Now she's let's. See. No, so she's you got, got those on. So so now, now she's got the now, padded. Well, I'm curious on. if you sit down, do you feel the big cushion? Is it like being on a? Uh, no, that's me. On lawn furniture. Oh, yeah. that. Well, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, baby's got back. Oh wow. You got. Looks like you've let's got. Take some, a look at that. Huh? Oh my God. <laughs> Let me Dude, see. looks like you've got a huge ass tumor. Uh, <laughs> you've got ass you have tumor. You have shelf ass. Nice. So step uh, out from behind the monitors. Okay. Let's see what. Uh, let's see. What oh the, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh she, my God. Yeah, look at she's that. got. Yeah, she's got. Baby's got back now. Well, that really does us. 
pop yeah, them out. They really, it, it really accentuates oh, yeah. oh, the yeah. backside of your backside. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's Look at that, uh-huh. Stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob and Tom VIP now. Just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? Bob and Tom. If you irradiate poop, it will be sterile, but it's still poop. You can pick your morning radio show, but you can't wipe Bob and Tom on the couch. Now in theaters. From Bob and Tom Pictures. Hey, Christy, it's Rob. It's been a while. I was just thinking maybe we should give it another try. Call me later. Christy, Christy, pick up. Uh, hey, how you doing, girl? It's me. I'm back in town. Man, the West Coast sucked. Oh, come on, give me a call. Hi, Christy. Hey, it's, it's me, remember me? Um, hey, I was... Looking at some old pictures of you know that time back in <laughs> back in Tuscaloosa. When, well, you know, I'm sure you remember. Uh -huh. I'll uh, I'll call me. From Bob and Tom Pictures, Christy Lee stars in the X Men. <laughs> hey, Christy, it's your favorite drummer. I'm in town playing for a new band called Saber. Call me. <laughs> Hi, Christy, it's me, Donnie, the biker. Hey, I was uh, cleaning out the boat and I found a pair of your. Uh, Anyways, I think they're yours. Uh, can we try it again, huh? I got the motor fixed. I swear to God it works better. You ain't gonna have to row or nothing this time. On my pager. Christy Lee's X-Men, now showing uh, every other weekend and Wednesdays if she's not too busy. <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Don't, 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 don't. The essential morning radio. Don't. This is Bob and Tom Radio. 24 7. 24 Bill Bauer is our guest. <laughs> Wild Bill Bauer. The thing is with my family, there's always something going on. I've got, a, I've got an aunt. She is the family failure. I mean, everything she touches, it just, it just goes wrong. Finally, at the age of 87, she had to declare bankruptcy. Oh. Now she can't buy a house until she's 94. <laughs> <laughs> that poor she, soul. <laughs> she, she is a victim. She's a victim. Absolutely. She's at home last week, knocking on the door, vacuum cleaner salesman. I got a dandy of a vacuum to show you, ma'am. Oh, I can't afford it. I don't have any money at all. Just let me show you what it can do. He forces his way into her place, reaches behind his back, Pulls out a sack of horse manure, dumps it on the floor, and goes, whatever this vacuum doesn't pick up, I'll eat. She goes, well, I hope you got a hell of an appetite, because they turned off my electricity this morning. <laughs> Hi, this is comedian Sean Mori, and you're... Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Doing some good work today, Pat. Thanks, Chick. You're you welcome. Too. There's Josh Arnold. Hey, Chickster. He's the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. And the 24-karat gold dipped rose and red wine is now available. Steven Singer Jewelers 24-karat gold roses. The number one gift for Mother's Day exclusively and only available at IHateStevenSinger.com. There's uh -huh. Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm uh, Chick McGee at the OrangeInsoles.com sports desk. And here's Tom. Thank you very much. You ever see a guy with a sign saying... Uh, a struggling artist, you've seen those, right? You know the uh, the starving artist sale at the gas station. Sure. Yeah. Do they? Do you think they? Would you go to a tattoo guy that had the cardboard sign, <laughs> starving tattoo artist? <laughs> you know, maybe. No. Maybe maybe pick the wrong line of work. Oh. I don't know. We're talking about bad tattoos today, because we had a woman who had a uh, uh, rather uh, phallic like a hairy phallus, if you will, uh, tattooed on her. Uh, on her arm and isn't having it removed. We now push forward in the world of news with Christy Lee. What else have we got over Australian there? Australian commuters were left stunned after an escaped racehorse wandered into a Sydney train station. Security footage showed the raincoat-clad horse making his way onto the station platform. The animal trotted along, stood in front of a train as if waiting to board, and even chased after a passenger. Police were called to the station, and the horse's owner soon arrived to take the animal home. 
Oh, seen the, the picture? It's, I have not seen the picture, I saw no. the video this morning. It's pretty funny. Yeah. It's just this horse standing there waiting for a train. <laughs> and then as the train leaves, there's a female horse sticking her head out the window, waving a yeah. handkerchief. Oh. <laughs> Farewell, my love. Farewell. <laughs> Don't be gone for long. <laughs> uh, I play your cheesy game. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, it's it's... Pretty confusing, Josh, because uh, you see the the horse, mm -hmm. the horse at the train station. He's followed in by a priest and a rabbi. Oh my! Yeah, you know. And then the, this is why the long face. <laughs> wait a minute! Wait a minute! There's a, oh, there's there a, there's a is. joke there somewhere. Oh, there's. It is, but he, he does have a big raincoat on. Yeah. yeah, which is pretty funny. Well, of course. Uh, so obviously he belongs to somebody. And he's at the Warwick Farm stop, so he's at the right place. It looks like he's also wearing uh, rubber horse shoes. Any one? <laughs> rubber shoes. Take it, rubber, please. Rubber shoes. He's the star of a famous Australian TV show. Oh, is that right? Uh, Mr. Zed. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is Zed? I don't get the Zed reference. They say Zed instead they of Z. Zed instead of Z. No. Uh, sure. Well, that counts as a... They've got a traffic guy, Zed Zeppelin. <laughs> well, that gives us a reason to do one of our horse tributes. Uh, certainly, certainly one of the classics. Uh, and, and here it is. In its ongoing effort to bring cultured programming to the beer-swilling, cheese-whiz-eating masses, Bob and Tom Television presents a new dramatic work. Tonight, we revisit Greek tragedy. Our story is one of carnal lust, in which our principal character kills his father in order to sleep with his own mother. This legend of Western civilization has been distilled into the lowest form of the theatrical arts. The 60s era sitcom. In this case, starring a talking horse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we give you Mr. Oedipus. <laughs> this is the story about a talking horse who killed his father without remorse so he could go have intercourse with a horse that was his mom. Some might not think that it's okay for a horse and his mom to roll in the hay. Let's hear what this horse has to say. Well, listen to this. I am Mr. Oedipus. <laughs> Hello, Mother. Hello, son. Why the long face? <laughs> I'm very troubled, Mother. Why? You're hung like a horse, and you come from a stable home. It's your ass, Mom. I've seen asses that don't have an ass as fine as your ass. What are you saying, son? You mean you want to horse around with me? You're beginning to stir up some feelings inside me. Come on, Mom. How about you give me a little sugar? Whoa, son. You need to rein in your unbridled passion. Stop stalling, Mom. I'm hot to try. Hey, you've got to harness your emotions. Oh, come on, Mom. Now, Ed, sometimes nay means nay. And besides, what would your father think? Don't worry. Dad won't be around for long. Get it? For long. <laughs> we do hope you enjoyed this tale of Mr. Oedipus. Join us again next week as we present a double feature, a radical new interpretation of a Shakespearean classic. Richard Harris, Barbara Eden, and Rip Taylor starring in A Midsummer Night's Dream of Genie. And tune in to see what happens when the man who wrote the Iliad in Odyssey joins the United States Marine Corps. It's Jim Neighbors as Homer Pyle, USMC. Only on Bob and Tom Television. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Oedipus. Yeah. Very... Very sophisticated entertainment. Was that Bob's <gasps> brother singing? Um, no. No. Um, I don't think so. Uh, but thank you. Uh, now, uh, uh, coming up, we have, of course, the Ace Cosby joke of the day. And uh, comedian Al Jackson and Willie G will be uh, apparently uh, weighing in with something. I'm not sure what. I'm looking cool. forward to that. Uh, what have you got, Christy? Japan giving the United States 250 new cherry trees to help replace those that are being ripped out for construction work. 
Hundreds of trees will be felled this summer as construction crews work to repair the crumbling seawall around the capital's tidal basin. Ah. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida announced the gift this week as President Joe Biden welcomed him to the White House for the official visit and state dinner last night. Uh, two Yoshino cherry trees were first planted on the bank of the Potomac River's tidal basin back in 1912 by First Lady Helen Heron Taft and Viscountess Chinda, wife of the Japanese ambassador to the United States. Helen Taft, the fattest first lady. That's right. Know. Yes. <laughs> Remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, big girl. Yeah. Uh, now, why are they... Uh, there's some kind of a problem with the seawall or something? Yes, they they're to... having to redo the seawall. So they have to take out all the cherry trees so they'll be replanted. So they, they can't... I don't know how they can't save the cherry trees and plant them somewhere else. Yeah, that's what like. I'm wondering. Yeah. I mean, there I must be know. some... I just hope this is a way to get 250 more trees out of the Japanese uh, government. That's, That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just hope that when they take them down, they have guys dressed as George Washington going and cutting them down and teaching the kids the George Washington cherry tree, the true story, of course. Oh, never, like living history. That he, that he, that he, he used the Kennedy half dollar across the Potomac <laughs> River. You know that that's what he threw? I did not know. This I don't think dollar. it was a Kennedy half dollar. It wasn't? Or no. a dollar? Maybe no. I'm remembering Where it wrong. I don't think he chopped uh, the cherry tree down either, now that I think about it. Right. Uh, will the... Uh, Conspiracy theorists uh, get into this one. You know, Josh, those uh, cherry trees have got uh, they've got microphones in them. Well, there's no doubt about that. Every yeah. tree in Washington D.C. is mic'd. Oh yeah, it's better better than what the Chinese gave us. <laughs> COVID trees. Oh jeez. <laughs> you, you know, the, you say that as it's a, as though it were a conspiracy. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the trees part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thank thank you very much. Uh, we're coming back with. Uh, Com comedian Al Jackson. What have you got coming up, Christy Lee? Um, we still have time for one more story here. A possible Civil War era cannonball was discovered in the yard of a Virginia home, according to WHSV. HSV? Yeah. Those letters don't ever go together. Right? <laughs> uh, Stoughton Fire and Rescue responded to the residents after landscapers found the munition. Harry Weller, Deputy Chief of Community Risk Reduction, told the station, quote, we assumed it was a Civil War era cannonball. Well, because we it, assumed that it was a Civil War. I, I have a dumb very question. Very unstable, so we treated it as if it was a live ordinance. Very unstable. <laughs> um, we treated it like it was a live ordinance. Were, uh, is the ordinance, if you will, of the Civil War era, is there powder in the balls? I thought so, it was a lead ball. I thought it was just like a big shot put ball. I don't know if they explode on impact or what the deal is on those. I don't know. I'm I don't not either. up to on my. Uh, yeah, I'm not either. I'm not asking either. for uh, cannonballs. I don't know. I mean, they say it's unstable ordnance, but, but I mean, is that who knows? I'm just I'm asking. I don't know either. He also said there could be more cannonballs around the city and warned residents they should never pick up or toss unusual objects found on the ground, but to instead call proper authorities. That's right. You should better yet call our landscaping company and see what we can do. To <laughs> now, could they be like bocce balls or? Maybe they're bowling balls from the Civil War. Are there any Civil War Maybe they're bowling, ski balls. bowling shoes nearby? <laughs> I'm not sure I know what bocce ball is, so I think I've seen it, but I'd rather... I think they're much smaller than yeah. cannonballs, yeah. but I don't know. I mean, how, how big is a cannonball? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know the answer to any of I these questions. I think like a basketball. Is it what? No, no, I no, don't. Maybe I, I, some, but no. I think it's a basketball. Yeah, the, the most size part, of a softball? Yeah, a lot, many. Like a like a like probably a different size. Like a volleyball. <laughs> I mean, there probably were some bigger ones, but I've seen them pyramided up at certain forts, and yeah. they're smaller. But again, is, is there explosives inside those things? That's what I don't understand. Maybe during the Civil War, I think in naval warfare they were just the balls themselves because you could just sink. Oh yeah, them. Master and Commander were the those. Have you, have you ever seen that movie and the the cannonballs just tearing up the sides of the ships? No, I never did see that. You know, a I, good I, movie. I have decided I wanted to watch that movie several times, but you told me one morning that unless you're a sailor, you really can't enjoy <laughs> Master and Commander. Did he really say that? Yeah, he oh, really I did. <laughs> said it helps helps with the enjoyment of the, of the film. I, there you go. I certainly recommend so sailing I felt to anyone. Less, so uh, I didn't, uh, sorry. Uh, yep. Well, apparently, cannonballs and other artillery shells of that period filled with a mixture of potassium nitrate, sulfur, and charcoal, commonly known as black powder, and it it does not explode easily, but it could explode. They were also good at just ripping off limbs. Sure. <laughs> when they would shoot by you. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> they would by you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there goes my arm. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll be careful. Maybe these folks in Virginia just have neighbors that don't like them. Maybe. <laughs> Trying to get rid of 
You know how to get rid of the fluids, don't you? Cannon fire. Uh, right now, I want to talk about uh, the spring and uh, about some great food options from HelloFresh. HelloFresh, they've had a great idea for a long time, which is they'll do the grocery shopping. They do the measuring. You put it together. They give you uh, photographs and recipes so you can do it very easily. And they've really upped their game. They have a whole bunch of new Ready in 20 recipes. Pick from a rotating menu of 20 satisfying options every week. And by the way, every week they've got more than 45 different recipes and boxes that they can send you. And you can do all kinds of things like change the protein, whatever you want to do. Christy Lee, what are you working on over there? Uh, we're working on Southwest chicken sausage and rice skillet. This is with salsa fresca and lime crema. This takes just about 30 minutes, but it's really easy to make. In fact, it's called one of their easy recipes and very kid-friendly. Kids seem to really like all of these wonderful tastes all in one skillet. And like I said, more than 45 options each each week, including, uh, as I mentioned, those special 20, the Ready and 20 recipes for a quick meal. Once again, save me a ton of time. You don't have to go to the grocery store. You don't have to do much because it's all measured. You just put it together. Sign up for HelloFresh right now and get a free dessert for life. That's right, for life. As long as you keep that subscription active. HelloFresh.com with a new code slash BTS How Sweet in honor of those great dessert items. That's HelloFresh.com slash BTS How Sweet. We're going to talk with a guy that we sometimes call Sweet Face. He is comedian Al Jackson up next. This is the Bob and Tom Show. This is. This is a song so girls don't get anorexia. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> Ooh, I want to be a plus size model. The kind that can't run very far. Cause if I could only be a plus size model I know I'd be a big, big star Please feed me <laughs> so, some, some people get sensitive about it uh -huh. But don't because the beautiful women are the big women and, I agree uh -huh. And I, like, I gained some weight Then I couldn't afford to keep it uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Here now and I want a carbo load Without having to exercise I don't want to worry if the fat goes to my thighs. I want to wear a plus size brassiere of room. I want to eat chips and wash them down with beer. Well, I've got a plus size dream, but I'm plus sized ornery for the best job in the world goes to the bigger <laughs> Hi, it's Josh Arnold from the Bob and Tom Show. Miss some of the show? Become a Bob and Tom VIP and subscribe to the audio and video podcasts. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. Tell us more about scatting. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's like in the traditional jazz sense. It's, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the scoot up, bop, 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 beat a beat a bada. But, I mean, I don't do that. I do it to classic rock only. Right. The most famous scat is probably the worst ever. Well, uh, of Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, a great artist, but the doobie doobie, doobie doo, doo, one of right. the worst, uh, Absolutely. terrible right. scats. But yeah, but he, I mean, it's hard. Like, if you're in the car and you're listening to Led Zeppelin, it's hard not to do the bow, 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 do, do, do. You know, so That's brilliant, yeah. Sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, and uh, you know, I've got the notoriety came from the uh, the ACDC, which sure. really uh, took sale, which is the <laughs> and uh, you know, my girlfriend's like most people sing the lyrics. That's true. Okay, mm -hmm. I can scat uh, Amos Moses by Jerry Reed. Oh please. yeah, let's hear it. Please. <laughs> 
and explained that the name of the event was pronounced Luge and not Lugie. <laughs> the competition continued without any further problems. Uh, ironically, the eventual winner of the Luge event was an Austrian named Karl Boogermeister. <laughs> he took the gold medal by a narrow margin mm. over Norwegian athlete <laughs> Who was disqualified? <laughs> this has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Essential morning radio all day and all night. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom Radio. Greg Hahn is our guest. <laughs> I went out with this one girl. Can I say this? Yeah. Sure. Get a load of this. I'm on a date. I was out with this girl, right? Here's what she says. It's true. She says, oh, I did something she didn't like. She goes, oh, you just lost some points. <laughs> oh, there's points involved. <laughs> it's a point system that the women have. It's a point system. Men, we don't know what's going on. All we know is it involves points, and all of a sudden, we're down. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my impression of her mother. <laughs> She's like, oh, you just lost some points. I'm like, really? How many did I start out with? <laughs> Don't ask any questions. You're just going to lose more points. Well, transfer my account to your younger sister. <laughs> my most recent marriage was a disaster. It made the wreck of the Edmonds Fitzgerald look like a fender bender. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry to hear that. Uh, hello. And you remember Lord's famous line about uh, gun control. More ah, or yes. yes. It, it, the relationship taught me a lot. It mm. taught me they won't sell you a handgun if you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> I got thrown out of J.C. Penny the other day. Really? Yeah, fondling up the mannequins. <laughs> believe that? And that ain't my fault. Have you seen the mannequins in there? Uh -huh. And they taunt you, too. They got the little short skirt on, arm up, kind of waving you over. <laughs> You know what I mean? Shoot. I tell you what, if you ask me, the little whore was asking for it. Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy's here, Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, there's Ace. I'm Chick McGee at the OriginSouls.com sports desk. Here's Tom. I look at the giant monitor, and I see ah. the very handsome Al Jackson. Uh, Al Jackson joins us from Hello. Denver, Colorado. Um, I was just watching you on the TV. Al, of course, is part of the Daily oh. Blast Live, weighing in on uh, contemporary issues. And, uh, and you do a great job on that show, Al. Thank you very much. I certainly enjoy it. I appreciate it, man. I, it's, uh, it's crazy. You know, they, they always say, uh, you know, this kid, he was dribbling at basketball when he was two, and now he plays pro basketball. I've been running my mouth <laughs> forever and now i get to do it for a living it's just like if you just keep talking people would be like just point the camera at this one <laughs> so yeah it uh it worked out i i love my job I got, I got real lucky all right well yeah you're doing a great job i certainly enjoy the show and the daily blast live is uh, seen all over the country and also um, on on the internet yeah. and um al is uh also a stand-up comedian that's how it all started Actually, it actually started. You were doing your stand-up in front of uh, of uh, classes while being a teacher. Is that correct? Is that correct? Well, I, I wasn't doing my stand-up because seventh graders don't think any adults are funny. <laughs> you know, if you look at if you have a kid that's like between thirteen and fifteen, if you look at who they think is hilarious, you'll be honored to think that they don't think you're funny. Uh, like uh -huh. the, a thirteen-year-old sense of humor is just like just some guy, you know, yelling and making weird faces. But it got me. Be, Doing stand-up got me used to talking in a room where nobody else is talking. And it's a weird feeling, but, like, ha doing that for five years, it wasn't that big a transition to go on stage and just be like, oh, yeah, I should. I'm used to hearing my voice project. So that, like, and, and it gave me unique material. So I just didn't have to talk about, you know, getting high and 
eating McNuggets. You know, I could talk about stuff that related to people. Yeah, we have uh, we Nothing have some wrong with getting <laughs> McNuggets, but we have a complicated cannabis story coming up today. Um, uh, with Je now, you live in uh, Denver, which is of course uh, the home of legal weed. Uh, as, as yes, I, I think it's uh, uh, and you, you're a fan it's of a the, little annoying. You, you, uh, you're a fan of the edibles. Uh, the, I, look, from time to time, yeah. I mean, when I say time to time, I mean may, maybe once every two or three months. But I swear, I'm just such an old, stubborn man already. I just have boycotted just because I'm. It's too much. Like you, there's those, uh, you know, the the big factories that make it in, on the side of the highway. So when you're driving on I-70, you just like you smell like you walk past a hotel room full of like rappers where you're just like you guys aren't even trying to get the smoke out that's what the highway smells like and it's it's i don't i just i'm old and i i i'm kind of like uh, it, maybe it's why i like moonshiners i do like that some stuff is still kind of illegal i don't like like they took an old boston market up here and now it's a weed store and so you can dri go through the drive through and people will hand you drugs through the drive-thru <laughs> windows. And now, it's just like, I, yeah, I, Al, I, I have not gotten out of, out of my car in a long time. Yeah, I, I have to interrupt, Al, uh, and I think Christy was standing next to me when this conversation took place. We were in West Virginia, and I was asking someone if weed was legal there. And do uh, you remember what she said, Christy? She said, no, but on June 7th, I believe, or somewhere around that, moonshine will be. Hmm. Yeah. Ooh. So yeah. Uh, I didn't get any expanding on that. Uh, I guess that means you can have a still in your backyard now. I, I'm sure there are certain limitations, but uh, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Yeah. Going back to uh, moonshine, uh, I'm. I, I have. All, of course, I've always heard the same thing. If someone makes the wrong kind of moonshine, you go blind when you drink it. So. Uh, Do you think that's folklore or? Yeah. It, I, I don't know. I mean, I. Uh, it, it, Making alcohol is probably fairly it, tricky. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, if if you drink, I mean, if you were to accidentally take a, a swig off of rubbing alcohol, it would mess you up pretty good. If it was, if that rubbing alcohol was double the strength, <laughs> you're telling me that, that that's not going to have any ill uh, physiological <laughs> effects. I think you you probably, it probably is a shock to your brain and whatever your eyes are attached to your brain. So maybe. But I mean, Maybe, I, but I, I wonder if that's going to make moonshine more expensive. Because when the government comes in, everything goes way up. Or it's going to make the illegal moonshine more attractive. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, in, in yeah, any event, we, we can move forward on this. Uh, we do have an unusual cannabis story coming up. But right now it's time to uh, educate this broadcaster with uh, some language issues that Al is uh, much more conversant with than I am. What have you got for me today, Al? N now, Tom, we know that you are. Uh, uh, I'll say knee deep, waist deep in the lingo, the language, to talk of the streets. So, I mean, I'm not going to offend you with anything too easy. So we'll start off eh, with a pretty, I, I love this word. I've been using it for 30 years. Tom, what does brick mean? Um, that's a, brick, like you would, that's a uh, quantity. Like you, that's a quantity. A mason would use. A quantity of marijuana. He's got a, a, uh, that a, could a, be a brick one of use, marijuana. Uh, no. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, usually it's white powder, but yes, it okay. could be that. Oh, really? Okay. Not in this case. You would just say this. You could say this to a friend that asks you a specific question. Oh, I know. I know what this one is. About what? the oh. circumstances. Oh. Um, here, here comes his real guess. Yes, here we yes. go. She's built like a brick S house, right? That's a classic, right? <laughs> It's yeah. a brick, wah, yeah, wah, I mean, wah, wah, house. Yeah, but that's, I don't think what wah, wah, he's wah. referring to here. Wah, wah, wah. No. So you don't say she's no, got an ass no, like a brick? No, I, I mean... No? Uh, Why would you I don't think that's how like that saying brick. goes at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes the... Uh, yeah, that's... So that's that? Okay, so uh, is a brick a compliment? No? No, it's just a description of your surroundings. That's my hint. Oh, well, I have. A, I live in a brick house. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, would, it has to do with weather. Oh, uh, weather, brick weather, weather. Mm -hmm. I know it's raining cats and dogs, <laughs> it's hailing like a brick. I, I have no idea. Anybody getting no, close I don't know. Uh -uh. Brick. 
It, yeah, it just means it's cold, like freezing cold. Huh. So you would just say, like, uh, dude, it is brick outside. Like, dumb, oh. it's brick. That's all you would have to say. Hey, Al, did you ever hear this? When I was yeah. in high school and we'd have an uncharacteristically cold afternoon and the wind would whip up, we would say the hawk is out. We'd call cold wind the hawk when I was in high school. Oh. Huh. Wow. I don't no, know. but I like that. Yeah. Oh, the and hawk. I wonder if that's in particularly windy areas and yeah, i didn't think that those Chicago. places existed yeah maybe yeah yeah it's an yeah, old blues oh yeah. oh yeah that's that there's that whole song yeah the or lou Rawls song and then of course ken the hawk harrelson well that's because of his nose really he's got a big <laughs> beak i don't think it means it's great crazy. baseball player and golfer christy uh yeah uh, i've never I, heard I, that I uh, the, br the brick thing right. Alan. I, the, it's brick out i like so, it yeah I, i've heard the so tom what, how would you uh, um, let me hear you say brick in a sentence we need to improve our refrigerator here at the Bob and Tom Show because I like my cream like a brick. Huh? Huh? Is it, uh, is it only weather related or can anything can anything be cold? Our refrigerator doesn't get things cold I, enough. I, I, I've only heard to use weather related. Oh, sorry. Like oh. it's only weather just to describe like a special kind of freezing when it is that kind of negative nine, like it's Ooh. just like it is brick outside. You don't just throw a brick around. Yeah. Like when you say that, it means you probably shouldn't go out like that. It's brick outside. If you're going to go skiing so, Tom, today, you better wear a face mask. <laughs> okay. Oh, and by the way, let's, is, let's there any, the, uh... is there any way you can stop complaining about things? I mean, we try to get everything fixed, and now the cream's not cold enough, Josh. <laughs> Have I, you heard? I had. I, this, this is the first I heard of it. <laughs> boy, oh, yeah. boy. How long have you been suffering with this situation, Tom? Well, first of all, the idiot that furnished that place, they have a refrigerator with the refrigerators in the bottom half. And the freezer's on the top. I know I want my cream real cold before I put it in my hot, hot, hot coffee. coffee. Yeah. Hot, hot coffee, and it's never very cold for very long. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. The Al, best thing topic. about Tom is he doesn't change. And so, you know, even if he went to the penitentiary, he would still have the same complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Why does the cafeteria line snake like this? It cuts through these two sets of tables. Why don't we just... <laughs> Is this grass-fed half and half? <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Screw. Uh... <laughs> yeah. okay. Tom, let, let's stay on a weather-related tip here. Okay. Tom, tell me what uh, when you would use the word breezy. Breezy? Um, yes. Wow. Um, uh, I mean, it, it, I mean, in the most ordinary way, it's breezy outside. Does that mean it's just windy, or is this something else? Why would I have a word that is the actual vocabulary? <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. Then you would not be learning. Um, it's got to mean something. Is this something? Is there a sexual component to this? When she walks by, it's breezy because she's no. Her ass is flapping. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. There you go. Uh, look at her Ray flapping ass. What are we talking about? Look at her go, that's flapping one, ass. That's, <laughs> one, that's one breezy broad. I'll yeah. tell you what that thing. I like it. Yeah. I do. I'm, uh, uh, any, 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 any one in the room have any ideas for me here? Things are loose. Thing? Things are easy. They're fancy free. Breezy. <laughs> oh, I, I could. Uh, you know what? I will accept that as a 1B. Absolutely. Mm. I could definitely see that Relaxed. being used. But in this case, breezy just means like uh uh like you're you're out of there. Like you it, almost ah, in the past tense. Sure. So you'd be like, look, I don't know who stole Josh's PlayStation. I was there with you guys. I I finished my beer. I was breezy and next thing I know he's calling me saying where's my PlayStation. Ah. Like that just like like you you left like you left in a very casual manner. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. So time. Let's hear you use breezy. Um, let's see now. Um, the other day there was an accusation that someone had um, that someone had uh, crop dusted in the hallway. Mm. Uh, it, I, uh, so it was you. No, I provided evidence that uh, it was not me. I, I was uh, breezy and had uh, breezed my way into the other building during that entire segment. Uh huh. So. The breeze came from someone else's ass. And by the way, to... I don't think that's right. Uh, okay. I think it was that chick who has the flappy ass. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. How did I do, Al? Look at her going. I was uh, breezy. Tom, I will take it. I will take it. We Do we have time for one more? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Go ahead. What do you got? All right, Tom. I love this one. I Because uh, this one's a little bit tough. Uh, we struggle with brick and breezy a little bit. But, uh, Tom, when would you use the phrase, I'm baby? 
Hmm. I'm baby. I, I am a baby. I'm baby. I'm baby. I'm baby. Um, <laughs> Please don't say it like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I don't know why. Um, I'm baby. Uh, is this a uh, is this said in a loving way to your uh, significant other? Mm. Not uh, no. really. You could so you could turn to Josh and say, "I'm baby." Hmm. I'm baby Josh. Change me. Oh, <laughs> no, so just you kidding. Just went. So yeah, just, uh, just, wow. I'm not responsible for the. <laughs> what have you been eating? I knew. I I will, I will say this while you guys are thinking about this. Uh, when I had this one down to ask you, Tom, I was thinking about. The baby diaper fetish, uh, like this is happening pre-7 a.m. here in Denver. I'm thinking about baby diaper fetish. I'm like, do you have to, do you live that 24 hours or do you tell your partner, hey, we're doing it? Because I could imagine, you know, we all bring our ho work home with us and you, you're transferring a conference call from your car to you. And like your partner's like, hey, I made in the bed. And you're like, we're not doing that right now. <laughs> like, do you, are you always a baby? Yeah. Or, like, if it's, like, hey, my dad's in the hospital. You're like, oh, I, I'll clean this up myself then. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, I don't know I, how I think that you, works. I think for those that are into that sort of thing, I think you pick a special occasion. Uh, mm. I don't know, perhaps Tuesday evenings or you just say, hey, coming Every up. Every third or, weekend. Yeah, yeah. I think that's an appointment. Yeah. <laughs> appointment thing. But Go get the gigantic playpen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, so getting back to the phrase baby, I'm, I'm baby. baby. You, yeah. want, you don't I'm wanna, baby. want to try it, Christy? Uh, no, because I would This go is a tough one. No, because I would go literal. Like, uh, yeah. Sheila's crazy if she thinks Josh really likes her. I'm baby. Hmm. Mm. Like, oh. I'm Josh's baby. That's a good not, guess. Not her. I'm, I'm, I'm the baby. I'm okay. baby. Uh, what does it mean, Al? It just means you You actually weirdly, <laughs> Tom, when you were asking, <laughs> you nailed the definition. You, it's I don't know. So it just means like you're a baby, like a baby doesn't know oh, anything yet. Oh, so okay. you you could just right. be like, yeah, uh, Christy and Josh didn't say a word to each other on air today. They wouldn't look at each other. And Chick is asking me what's the problem. And I'm like, I'm baby. I don't, I just okay. showed up at work. I don't right. know. Oh, that makes sense. That's, so it's just like, you're I'm just baby. saying, I don't, sure. yeah. So like, I like a blank slate, like, I don't know. So wow. I can say to my, my girlfriend uh, in a context like this, I'm baby, baby. <laughs> you could. I, yes, I don't know why don't know you why would. Oh, because yeah. well, that's her nickname. Yeah, he calls her baby. So, I, 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 so you go, I'm baby. Oh, do you? Yeah. yeah do does. you have a nickname for your significant other, Al? I absolutely do. Is it something it is you can lamb. share? You call her lamb? Yeah. It's, just strictly, yes, is it lamb? Yeah. Or honey lamb or lamb chop? <laughs> just lamb, strictly lamb. 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 Lambykins? It, it's, it's just lamb. And when people meet her, they get it. She is uh the, the, like quiet and gentle in a way that's it's she really is like I always said the the reason I, I just really love being with her she's like a person from 2006 like she doesn't have Instagram <laughs> she doesn't get overly mad you know every day people have this like rage about something they they change Twitter or something you know it, like she doesn't ever she's always like. <laughs> Coming home to her is like coming home to a jazz record playing in another room. It's oh, just quiet oh, and chill. Sweet thing to say. She is so. It's like I, I I find myself withdrawing, and I've talked about this on the show. Like I've basically left society. I don't care for this the theatrics. I just kind of everybody's so extra about everything, and she's just like, yeah, what's up? You want to go to the baseball game? That's all she just cares about baseball. That's all. She, <laughs> that's that's nice. all. Yeah. All she cares about. I like, so, uh, I like the analogy. It's like walking home and yeah. having a jazz record yeah. on the other room. Mm -hmm. What record do we play? It's just quiet house? all the time. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. Well, thank you, Al. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Al Jackson is uh, one of the hosts of DBL, the Daily Blast Live, and uh, he'll be. Yes, uh, he'll be. You'll be. You'll, you don't wear the aviators on TV anymore, do you? Do you wear those glasses? You wear the uh, uh, kind of intellectual looking round. No, sometimes I. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll switch to these. I just have to get these, like, uh, so they're, they're non-reflective on the TV screen. But uh, okay. also, er uh, everybody, please pick up my al albums, plural, in earnest, and uh, I may unblock you, Cadence as a weapon. Uh, all those things are available on my Instagram, Al Jackson IG.
Al, Al Jackson, IG. Thank you, Al. Bye, Al. Much appreciated, as always. You, Al. Uh, Al. Right now, if you were enjoying uh, that uh, broadcast, yes, would have been very, very nice if you were listening to those Raycon earbuds. And you know Mother's Day's coming up, and how many moms say, I just want a day of peace and quiet? Well, Raycon has your answer. Raycon's everyday earbuds can give mom peace and quiet that she's been looking for. And she can tune into the Bob and Tom show on her Raycon earbuds. Uh, at a price that you guys will love even more. Eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life, seamless Bluetooth syncing. Raycom's optimized gel tips are designed to fit every ear ever made, and they do stay in place. Plus, additional features of Raycon, earbud tap functions, noise isolation. They'd really make the best Mother's Day gift, and Raycon also offers 30-day returns just in case. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today to get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash Tom. That is buyraycon.com slash Tom. Read the reviews. People love them. We get love letters about their Raycon earbuds. Hope you love them, too. Now, uh, when we come back, Christy, what have you got over there? Uh, well, we have that interesting story you said about non-medical cannabis. And we have what are the most and least attractive hobbies for Japanese men and women. I'm sure this is something you think okay, about all okay, the time. Okay, good. But uh, cannabis in the news also yeah. coming up. It's going to be uh, Willie G. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get a hold of us. Call. I, I made this crazy movie called Freddy Got Finger, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, you know, I wrote it, I directed it, and it was a really, really crazy movie, and, uh, you know, it won the Raspberry Awards, and the people said it was the worst movie ever, ever made, made, and all this yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. but the, that was sort of the point, was to make the, the crazy movie. The worst movie, movie yeah. yeah mm -hmm. kind of the point of it, right? So now what's happened is, and, and really what's been a really exciting thing about going and, and doing these shows is... You know, people are coming out to the shows. They're bringing their Freddy Got Finger DVDs, and and it's turned out, uh, it's sort of turned into a sort of a bit of a cult, sure. you know, mm -hmm. smash. I've gotten a call from the studio recently. They said the the DVDs have been selling through the roof. They've sold over a million units of the didn't, DVD. And didn't I hear that you you're going to do a director's cut? Did I want now. I want to do a director's cut of the movie <laughs> because you know <laughs> because there are scenes that just you know when you when you edit a you know when you do one of these commercial studio movies, especially a movie like that, they focus group it, and you had to change things and tighten it all up right. so there are some some crazy scenes that i'd like to get back into it but also it's sort of just the i think the irony of doing a director's cut for me sure. personally is pretty funny whenever there's a movie there's always a porno movie that someone makes based on the yeah. title yeah it was no. called freddie got fingered <laughs> <laughs> okay back to you tom green <laughs> people actually to be honest the things that people really like out of the movie are some of the sillier scenes not sort of not so much the gross scenes but mm -hmm. people people always come up to me and they say Daddy, would you like some sausage? Which is this line from the movie. Daddy, would you like yeah. some sausage? So I sing that on stage. Uh, you know, come, come see me on tour. We'll, we'll be singing some of the hits. Sing along. But, that's uh, right. uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's your stairway to heaven? People, yeah, that's my stairway. I, the Bum Bum song would be my stairway to heaven. That, that went to number one on MTV, the Bum Bum song. When you Google Freddie Got Fingered, the first thing that comes up, the first line is Freddie Got Fingered quotes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Yeah. And then you go to that page in the sausage. Yeah. The sausage organ comment is the very first line. Yeah, there's all sorts of very silly lines in the movie. Yeah, it's there's not, a whole pile of quotes yeah, here. Yeah, so. I was in a rap group when I was in Canada when I was a teenager. That was actually, what were they called? We were called Organized Rhyme. We were actually had a record deal when I was mm. 19 years old. No with, kidding. Went right out of ah. high school with A&M Records and we had a number one hit, you know, in, in many Canada? markets in Canada. We were the much music uh, video award of the year for best rap video. That was sort of the. Is that uh, on your website? Uh, you can find it on there. Yeah, you can find it on there, and you can find it on YouTube. And uh, you know, the thing that was sort of my first sort of realization. Hey, I, I want to work in show business. You know, yeah. I was I was sort of like all of a sudden I had this record, and we were touring, and we were doing radio shows, and I, I went and started my radio show, and right after that, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, it was initially a rap music show that I turned into a talk show, which then turned into my TV show. But, uh, but so, uh, yeah, I, I, I've had a lot of great rappers on my on my website too. Like if you go on on, on TomGreen.com, you can see me rapping with uh, Too Short and Exhibit. There's this funny video of me rapping with Exhibit mm -hmm. where I surprise him with this rap that's ended up on YouTube. It's got two and a half million views now, and mm -hmm. you know it's sort of funny because you see these rappers who just aren't expecting me to start rapping and then right. I start rapping in their face, which is fun. So. <laughs> Canadian rap, right Canadian rap. Yeah, you can see why you haven't heard of it. Hey. Canadian rap. Tom Green is our guest. <laughs> You know what bugs me about, about life? What's that? People who take a, a 
reasonably simple task and make it incredibly complicated, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> making a full sh- a full scale uh, Broadway show production out of drinking iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> that to me is uh, yeah. really. Is What's your problem? Good. Why can't I enjoy my iced tea over here? No, you can. I, did you, uh, you bring your can. thermos? Today? I did oh, bring yeah. my thermos. Can we get a picture? Can we get a picture of the thermos sit- sitting and Christy standing beside it? Yes, so they can get the actual full because seriously, spectrum Christy can, of how Christy big this can is. Easily, <laughs> That's bigger than Christy's head. Correct me if I'm you wrong. That. Christy could easily sit on that and watch a sporting event. Like a, yeah, certainly. Well, what's wrong with having You a know little... what? I think we should uh, have her sit on it, and we'll caption it, Sun Tea. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to read some article or some idiot friend, and when I t- find the idiot friend who told you about this cold iced tea, I'm going to punch him right in the face. I'm going to, oh, well, you know. Uh, who was that guy? Uh, the best thing to do is to be in a separate studio because yeah. Jeff. Would you, like, would, you, would you like a little oxygen. glass of uh, nice iced tea? No, thanks. It's delightful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I love iced tea. There's I'm no ice in it, though. No, God, no. God, well, then, no. That the would make it then it's not iced tea. The ice, down. the ice would bruise the tea. Yes. No, no, the ice is on the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> See? See? I quit. See? I quit. <laughs> See? Can we get a picture I of the ice tea? How much want. does this add to your morning? You had such a bad morning, you said. Are you getting up extra early now no. to make your tea? No, the tea was made last night in the car when I left this morning. Oh. In the car? Somebody put it in the car? I did. You put it in the car. You, you put it in the car last yes. night. Last night. Yes. How this did you... is it's crazier than I thought. Well, how really? Did you know, I thought it was supposed three to... letters come to mind. OCD. Uh, oh, the, oh those definitely. Are you kidding me? Oh, I thought it was supposed to brew that's in the old, refrigerator. That's old technology. Only with Tom, the OCD is in capital letters with big lights around each. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I thought the tea was supposed to <laughs> brew in the refrigerator overnight. First Tom's of all, taking it a new step, I'm sure. Well, why, why First not have it all, uh, brew? I call it not OCD. I call it CDO because I want the letters in alphabetical order. <laughs> 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 Who shoots me gets famous. That's Good famous. Point. That's yeah. right. That's very uh-huh. that's, uh-huh. Hey Amen. Uh-huh. I'm with you there. I got you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> How po- well, well put. Yeah. <laughs> so that is I interesting. Agree. Yeah, we don't want to see you get shot no. either. No. That no. Would be, no. That would be bad. Um, what else is new in your life? You still married? Yeah, yeah. Although um, my wife's on a cruise right now. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Without you? Without me. Yeah, so that's okay. But I used to go on a with her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. but she was with her, with her um, girlfriend from high school. Mm. Uh-huh. Well, that's mm-hmm. nice. Huh? Steve. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, I know. Wow, Hello. we all are. Okay. <laughs> all right. His name isn't Steve Licker. They just called him that. Yeah. Where are you from, by the way? Patterson from Patterson, New Jersey. Oh, sure. That's famous. Yeah. Word. You know, small. Sure. Thugged out town. You mm-hmm. know, it's tiny. So small, we used to get robbed by people we knew. <laughs> small. People were like, stick them up. I'm like, Andre? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell your mother, man. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, how is Aunt Carol? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll come hey, home for dinner. <laughs> Are you listening to Bob? That coming up. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy and Pat, Hi. Josh Arnold, Hello. Ace Cosby. I'm Chick McGee at the OriginSouls.com Sports Center with a sports update. All right. The 2024 Masters uh, has uh, kicked off. Well, sort of. Inclement weather has delayed the start for this morning's Masters until 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time slash Augusta Time. Pushing tee times into the afternoon and potentially part of round one into a second day so far. So we will keep an eye on the Masters and when that begins. And they're getting rain in in Georgia too, as a big giant portion of the country getting rained on this morning. Uh, glad it was uh, not on Eclipse Day. Yes, yeah, uh, for, certainly for most for most folks. Uh, certainly. Now uh, we have Christy Lee at the Bob and Tom News Desk. What's going on over there? A new study out there has found that cannabis use is associated with dramatically lower cognitive decline risk in adults. Researchers at the State University of New York analyzed the relation of cannabis use and the prevalence of individuals self-reporting an increase in memory loss. They found 
that compared to non-users, those who used marijuana had 96% lower odds of reporting cognitive decline. Scientists believe THC and CBD could play a role in improving cognitive function, though they stress that more research is needed. Uh, now, so you're talking about the self-reporting of stoners? Yes. Hmm. Anyone, class? Anyone skeptical? They might let some things slide. Is that what you're trying to imply? Maybe they forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I, this is the, my uh, criticism earlier. A lot of the self-reporting stuff, I'm always a little bit skeptical of the research. Yeah, but... Um, of this so they're saying that if you... Oh, hang on a second. Mm. Uh-oh. This is interesting. Hello? Oh. Oh, 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 well, see, oh, Jesus. oh that was a member of our staff who enjoys, uh, uh, it was like to have yeah. a little, no, he forgot what he was going to say. A little pot. Uh, <laughs> it's fascinating. We'll see. Um, so they're saying that um, uh, when they say cognitive decline, they mean you know, like your like memory a, and your. Or like an Alzheimer's type disease is or something. lesser among those that. Is lesser among those who apparently use medical or non medical marijuana. There you go. But it's self-reported, so, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure there are more more research, I'm sure, will be okay. done on that. Okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I certainly would look forward to finding out more. There are still a few dry towns in the state of New York, and now New York State lawmakers will consider lifting a law that allows towns and villages to ban alcohol sales. The bill would strike down a 1934 law that allowed communities to stay dry. Seven communities in the state have complete booze bans. The bill's sponsor argues that lifting restrictions will spur business growth and make it more convenient for residents to purchase alcohol. Seems wow. a little antiquated, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, there are a lot of places in Kentucky, for example. Virginia. They have dry counties, right? Yeah, Ferrum, Virginia. Um, hmm. Isn't the county where they make Jack Daniels a dry county? I don't know. Is I that think, true? I think I want. Yeah, one of I the think that would be the. Yeah, I, I think know. one of the major bourbons is made in a dry county, but uh, huh? Well, I'm shocked. So, by so that. there are uh, communities in New York where you, you can't you can't buy booze. Seven of them. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, why, you know, why not leave it up to the community? Yeah, that, I, that's why. I, I don't think this is such a bad thing. If, no, if the if the county wants it. Yeah. And you know the 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 people who live there. That is. No. On the other hand, I, these fellows weighed in on this uh, issue. Many right to party. And I, I salute them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right there on the front lines. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> oh, okay. I'm now. I wonder if. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to this. Okay. Can the communities also ban dispensaries? In places where there's leak, I'm sure that I'm they sure can. You I think, could. I, yeah, absolutely. So, is it, how does this differ? You would have to get a permit. I mean, to me, it seems like kind of the same thing. Yeah. You, know, you can you can't you can't sell booze, but you can have a dispensary next to a Walmart. I mean, come on, why not? Uh, you know, make it make it consistent, make it fair. I mean, they don't have this in Brooklyn, for example. What do you mean? You 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 can buy booze in Brooklyn. Yeah. Otherwise, where would all those hipsters buy their mead? Mead. <laughs> Mead. 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 Yes. Mead. Isn't that a type of wine or something? Some type of bay, bay, our brew, yeah. yeah if, if you're a hipster. Medieval if you're, brew, I I've never it, heard of mead. Well, that's you're not, isn't it beer water. and honey? You're not, you're not a hipster. Is that what it is? Uh, something if, like if that. If you're a hipster, you're drinking mead. You're not drinking, like, you know, I'm drinking a Budweiser. I think Game of Thrones yeah. okay. brought in with <laughs> mead okay. back. Yeah. Real you know there are places in Brooklyn that oh. serve mead. Yes. What? No mead? Yeah. Well, let's get out of here. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's crazy. I mean, it seems to me though, like, hey, if you if your community votes it that way, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. It should be up to, to me. That's a popular vote type thing. Hey, yeah. Do, do we want to be ballot? do we want to be dry or do we not anymore? Yeah. Well, I guess we'll find out in the state of New York. Oh, by the way, uh, those Stanley cups that are so popular. Yeah. I do not own one, but a lot of people do. They are releasing a Mother's Day edition at 10 a.m. Eastern. Today. Well, I, they're immediately sold out. They're immediately <laughs> sold out. <laughs> is, this a, is this a Target thing? It's No, it's online at stanley1913.com. Oh, okay. So if you want to get one, you better get it today. Da Target today did do something with those. Yeah, Target, yeah, has, Target has some too, but this is a special Mother's Day. That I know we have, online. A, we have several of them, and some of them can't go in the dishwasher. Oh, really? Oh, they can't? Oh, really? No, because they have stickers on them. Oh, oh, oh. I, okay, yeah, sure. 
I mean, they could go to the dishwasher, but then the sticker comes half off, and Dad's in trouble. I was worried for a second. I okay, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Tom, you, you, uh, Tom, you and your girlfriend gifted me one of those, and I—it's fantastic. Really? See, I, mean, I don't own one. I don't. You can, the ice lasts forever. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Hmm. Coffee. They really do. They really keep and stuff gold. And if you're a Yeti fan, I believe Yeti's doing the same thing with the Mother's Day cup oh, okay. too. So I have if your mom some of those too. Yeah, I have a Yeti too. I like good cups. <laughs> Is that yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. when I say good cups, put you down for p- pro, positive for yes, good sir. cups. Yes, okay. Sir. With Got mead? It. Yes, yes. <laughs> Without. Like a cup of mead? <laughs> yeah, all right. Does mead come in cups or does it... Well, I like mine oh, in a goblet. a pint. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want Maybe a goblet. a grog of mead, I think. Would be grog, crack? I think, is the drink. Oh, is that a, oh, yeah, a yeah, grog? A what is the yeah. proper vessel for your mead? A goblet. That's what is I want. Is it a goblet? That's what I, I, I want. A, I think it's a grog. I think a grog is grog what's is in a, the goblet. Yes, I think grog is the fluid. I think the grog is what you put the drink in, I think. I think had... we couldn't be more different. <laughs> is there a porter? Anybody ever? All I know is we're having a good time. There's what grog, is, there's mead. What is it, Pat? Porter. Porter's oh, sure. an ale, thick. right? Yeah, hey, yeah. Real thick. Hey, porter. Yeah, porter. <laughs> <laughs> Pour me a porter. All I know is the big a mystery part. here is how did the Beastie Boys become popular? I've never understood oh, that's that. That's a great song. Once. You don't like that? No, too? no. It's did you not. like any of their later stuff? No. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Well, they do have a song called I Don't Know that I really do like, but it's a song. I mean, there's people singing and playing instruments, not screaming and yelling, so said the old guy. The early beasties is a lot of screaming and yelling, but they, look, they were... You uh, gotta fight! Yeah. No, you're not gonna get one better than that. All right. <laughs> they were fighting for their right to party. Okay. It was okay. fought. Okay, uh, um, <laughs> we are coming right back with Willie G will be our special guest. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll-free at 1-888-BOB-TOM-1 or... At- Okay, let's go see Bob and Tom. Yeah! You can't say it on the air. Trust me. Not the way you want to do it. You, we don't I've know. been over this a hundred times. No, if you say that, we're going to get a fine. We're not going to get a fine. The average idiot's going to perceive it as the noun. No, you, no, no, no. We can't do that. You can't say that on the air. It has no meaning as a verb, whereas my term can be taken two ways. That's why the no. joke has a joke. No, you can't do that. Kids, let, let me just ask you this. Am I right? The only way to make this joke funny, you've got to use the word cornhole. Hi, this is Pat Godwin from the Bob and Tom Show. Miss some of the show? You don't want to do that. Become a Bob and Tom VIP and subscribe to the audio and video podcasts. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. From what we understand, the art of the vajazzling begins with a, with a, uh, with a waxing. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, uh, how much preparation have we had so far? Has has the well, she's gotten a Brazilian. Oh, okay. she's but done we that didn't already. Do that here. Okay, Prove good. It. No, we didn't do that. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it, Marianne. Yeah. Marianne. Marianne. The epilation has already taken place. Yes. And when was that done? Yesterday. You can go as low as you want to go, or as high as you for, want to, right? For Today's purposes, we're going a little bit above the penny okay. line. And presumably, there's some kind of glue used? Yeah, we're using eyelash glue today. Really? Okay. Do you mind? Should I go in there uh, so I can all. see this? I think yes. you should. Yes. 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 Get right down. Yes. Eyeball Good that luck. thing, Tom. Do you mind, uh, Hillary, no, would you, you mind if I... go in there. No, of course no, not. You don't mind if I come in? Okay. Yeah, all right. We, we need it's you. It's better yeah, than you pressing your face up against the window. Licking the window. Tom is heading in. The ladies from the Naked Monkey are about to... He's going to pet the monkey. What design are we doing? The, today. We're doing I'm, the Bob and Tom logo. I'm attempting the oh, logo. Hey. Awesome. Oh, Are you really? Oh, yes, that's nice. Right. Uh-huh. This is really nice. Uh, now, I can let me try to describe this so you can see. Above the panty line, mm-hmm. um, a, a number of sort of, uh, are these rhinestones? Yes. Yeah. Uh, rhinestones, have, are those already glued on? Yes. They okay. are, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're glued on in kind of an arc, and then she already has the uh, word Bob cool. um, above the panty line in little teeny rhinestones. Oh, That's really? And Tom? Nice. All right. Mm-hmm. So um, she's pretty fast with this stuff. Yeah, wow. she's very now, are, good. Uh, so have you noticed an upsurge in popularity in having since this Since for Love Hewitt? Well, actually, just since you guys started since talking oh, about really? it. Ah. Nice. Uh-huh. Okay. The uh. T in Tom is not cooperating. Well, of course. Uh, what a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? Hey. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's, oh my gosh. Uh-huh. Guys, do you think it's a good idea? Well, I need to see I, the I, finished yeah. product. But I, I think Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? 
Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. do it but yeah. i bet you can enough no, to make us go no. oh my god no but so he called and, and I mean, he heard you doing your bono and he called you yeah he was very nice and then i saw him i was at uh dodger stadium or no i can't remember what stadium it was it was very and i and i and he and i i, I met him and and i'm in the you know like the the stadium doorway mm -hmm. and he said some very sweet things and very kind and we talked back and forth and it was just him and i and, and one other person and he starts walking out to do his concert, and he turns around and he takes off those, you know, the fly sunglasses, mm -hmm. and he goes, "Hey, Bobcat," and he throws them to me, <laughs> and I catch him, and I go, "Thanks, Mean Joe." <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. And he goes, and he goes, "What?" what? Yeah. Oh, and I go, no. oh man, that's the that's one of my best riffs ever, oh, yeah. falling on his deaf Gaelic ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bob and Tom. 24-7. Comedy via your computer. Bob and Tom, 24-7. This is Bob and Tom, 24-7. This is from the uh, East Allen Courier newspaper. This is, a, this is an actual classified ad. Uh -huh. Is that the East Side of Allen? Yes, yes, it would be. All right. Be my um, guess. Let me, for example, uh, here's a... Uh, uh, just a typical, typical ad in here. Uh, yeah. Complete meat processing and curing, slaughtering and trucking, closed during August, and it's a custom meat place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, here's another ad. Huge multifamily garage sale. Oh, good. April 29, 30, uh, uh, 7 in the morning till 5 in the evening. Right. Here's some of the items they have. All right. Here, here Christy, why don't you read them? Here, I've, I've, I've circled this for you. Just go ahead, read the items that they have. Uh, let's see. They have baby clothes, strollers, Vibrator, adult and children's clothes, Stop. shoes, toys. <laughs> Only one? It says one. one who, puts, who puts that in their classified ads? The vibrator must go. <laughs> well, here's Jimmy's old bike when he was a kid, and uh, we've got four basketballs. Here's a nice set of golf clubs. Wait a minute, read it again. <laughs> and a vibrator. Read it again, filthy mind. We don't, we don't buy vibrators at a Baby clothes, we... strollers, vibrator, yes. adult and children's clothes and shoes, toys, bike, too much to mention. I was going to give them the benefit <laughs> of the doubt, but mention. I don't know how that... <laughs> then, at well, the end it's, then at the end it says bake sale also. I this sounds like kind of a fun store. garage sale. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Get you down there. We have uh, also a Matt Fulcher on here. Matt, exactly. um, I know you're, you're a rap fan. Do right, you, right. Do you curse a lot in your... Uh... Well, you know, on the radio they take out all the curse words, yep. which means they take out all the words. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Oh, sure, for the rap song. Yeah. Sure. Turn on the hip-hop station, it's like, I'm gonna... You up so bad, gonna up in the to your mother man, and after that I'm gonna your mother sister gonna up, up n not, n not, not not even gonna kiss her <laughs> something something like that yeah. Yeah. Something. Hi, this is Rodney Carrington. Tell your home. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Hi, Chick. He's at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee at the OriginSouls.com sports desk. And here's Tom Griswold. Uh, a quick update. Uh, you were right, Christy. June 7th, uh, House Bill 4793 in West Virginia, originally dubbed the Moonshine Bill, mm -hmm. will allow... Uh, uh, persons 21 years of age or older to distill up to five gallons of alcoholic liquor at their home for personal or family use. So, uh, legal moonshine, apparently. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, good to know. Or, and perhaps you can make, uh, we were talking about mead. Mm. Perhaps you feel the need for mead. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> right now, I feel the need to answer the phone. There he is. Willie. It's uh, Willie G on the big screen. Hey, Willie, what's going on up there? 
Hey, guys, not too much. You like the new setup? I love it. What is that, a big curtain behind you? Yeah, I'm starting a magic show where I teach magic to frat bros on YouTube. I'm very excited about <laughs> it. It's nice. nice big blue curtain. looks great. That's Thank something. You. Yeah. Now, did you hear our story about the uh, uh, cannabis? Apparently, this I want to get this straight. Uh, Self-reporting, apparently. Mm -hmm. People using cannabis were having, uh, uh, I guess, less dementia in the future. Was that the essence of this story, if I understand well, it correctly? Yes, it's associated with dramatically lower cognitive decline in adults. Researchers at the State University of New York analyzed the relation of cannabis use and the prevalence of individuals self-reporting um, an increase in memory loss and found compared to non-users, those who used marijuana had 96% lower odds of reporting cognitive decline. Yeah, I tried reading that. It was, uh, I'm not much of a biologist. A lot of words that were very um, science-y yes. in there. It was kind of tricky for me to navigate. So I don't know about cognitive decline after 45, but when you're a little high reading that at 645, very hard to figure out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and again, self-reporting. I, I don't know how scientific this thing is. But, yeah. Uh, 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 who knows? I, I, I certainly don't um, know if I will have severe dementia or not. If, if so, is the message of this that if you smoke more weed, you're not going to get dementia? Is that the? I think that's what they're kind implying, of talking about. Yeah, the, implying. Thank the you. The implication. Yeah. Or is that you're just going to forget about? Or you're not going to report it because you're too high. Yeah. Know? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. See. Now, what else is going on there, Willie? Not, I wanted to ask you guys something. Okay. Uh, my little sisters are constantly saying that I'm turning into my dad, and it's something that I'm terrified of turning into my dad. And last night I was at a dinner party, and I had sort of a turning into my dad moment. Uh, we were talking about birthdays. A woman at the table just asked me how old I just turned. I go, oh, I just turned 31. And this woman who we don't know, it's a shared table situation. She says, oh, I just turned 31 last May. And then everyone kind of nodded. And I said, oh, you can't say that. <laughs> and she was like, what do you, and I was like, May is a month away. You don't say I turned 30. You just say I'm 30. You, that's like a four-month leeway for you to say, I just turned that in that month. You can't do that. Mm. And everyone at the table looked at me like I would said a slur. <laughs> so wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You just turned 31. I but, did. But Thank she you said for she, birthday tax, by the way. Uh, you're welcome. She said, um, if I'm not mistaken, she said, I just turned 31 last May or next or coming up? I just turned 30 last May. You so can't say that. That's not allowed. No, because you're going to be 31 in a month. Exactly. You don't say well, I just, there's a four month, I, I don't, you can't do that. And I just thought that I was, everyone got mad at me and it seemed like a real Tommy how, Key moment. However, with your concern about your turning into your father, this certainly does sound like something your father would add to the conversation. Right. Most people would just let that slide. Yeah. Not, not mention anything at all about it. You see uh, that, no, don't you? I, I yelled, no, you can't say that. And then I told her why she was wrong at a yeah. nice dinner party. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I agree. You did the right thing. Yeah, you did the right thing. Okay. All right. Thank you. There you go. Well, I've been told that Willie moves just like me. I've had two people at random say that to me. What? Yes. You mean he walks like Groucho Marx in duck soup just like you do? <laughs> and there was a photograph taken that uh, we'll be posting at some point backstage at our event in West Virginia. Uh -huh. And unbeknownst to me, Willie and I are standing in exactly the same way. I took that Hands photo. I know exactly what you're talking Hands about. Yeah. And I didn't know. Yeah, notice. exactly like this. Yep. Yeah. And then the, the previous week, someone had said, oh, my God, you're moving just like, you moved just like Willie. Yeah, those damn genetics, huh? I, I've never noticed it. And Gregor Mendel had something, didn't he? Huh? Boy, oh boy! <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know if it's, if it's That's just. That's interesting. I'd never noticed that he moves like. Yeah, you. yeah nor have I. I don't think I move in any particularly these interesting way. Hmm. Well, usually you do kind of magoo about, and yes. we might move similar, but I'm glad that I don't make as much noise when I stand up as you. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm still just standing for the time yeah. being. Go. Oh, he makes he makes noise when he stands up. He makes noise when he yawns. He makes noise when he sneezes. He makes. Mm -hmm. It's like a triceratops waking up from a nap. It's a weird noise. Right. And, and I personally oh. am sitting here waiting for the uh, the similarities to be drawn between the word movement. And movement, ah. because that's probably going to happen at any any point, I would think. See. When I came in yesterday morning, Mike Mark said, boy, you missed it. I go, what I miss? He goes, sneezing like I've never heard before. And that's saying a lot. Like I've never heard before. <laughs> Coming from Tom. you got to release that uh, energy when you sneeze. Is that right? you gotta, you got to let it out. He is two hallways away. Yeah. And, a, and, and in theory... <laughs> 
two uh, soundproof walls. So yeah. well, they must, they must have been use, beauties. You never keep this door shut because you're a weirdo, but that's you. I don't like being locked in a room. You don't? Are you afraid you couldn't get out? Well, yeah, I don't blame you there because the odds of anyone in this room being locked in a room at any point, yours probably the highest. Okay, now, uh, are you going to be watching the Masters at all, Willie? I know you love to watch sports. Are you, do you watch any golf at all? I, I really, I've never watched golf. I'm going to be watching a lot of baseball. I do baseball. Golf might be a great sport to watch while you're stoned because it seems very chill. It seems like you can just hang back and watch whatever. And you can bet on golf, Wilbur. You can bet. You can? I, I did bet on golf. Yeah. A couple years ago, there, you there go. were a couple dudes from uh, South Korea that were golfing. Uh -huh. And if they didn't place top three, they were going to have to not play for the Olympic team and like go get a job somewhere. I thought that was the funniest story ever. Oh. Like, you, if you don't win, <laughs> if you don't place, you, you, you're you no longer an athlete. So did if the stakes are high, I'll bet a little bit. Did you Did you win that bet? I did not. Okay, and sorry. that guy, he's not hes not an athlete anymore. So it's not a very funny ending to that story. Okay. Oh, Ooh. Geez. Okay. That actually. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Now, here's I do want to say, uh, oh, I was just going to say that it is kind of fun, to, especially this time of year. It's almost 420 season. And I am a pothead, but I don't really like stoner culture. Stoner culture is the reason a drug dealer, when I was in high school, told me that you should buy an eighth for $80 because it's cool to pay with 420s. I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> Now, are you aware that um, at the Masters, you, of course, famously win the green jacket? Right. And they have a whole bunch of them there because they don't know the size of the, the winner's going to be. So mm -hmm. that they have to, I, I suppose in advance, they probably ask you. But um, they, once you win the green jacket, you have to leave it there. You don't get to take it home. I don't yeah. know if you knew you that. You have to leave it there. Yeah. And not get to. Yeah. Now, you can take home the uh, two pairs of slacks and the vest. But you got to leave the jacket there. There are two pairs of slacks in a vest. Oh, they stopped doing that? Mr. Comedy. It's just the green jacket. Oh, sorry. I thought, well, that's no good. Uh, uh, yeah, but no, you have to, you do have to leave it there. So when they have those events. Do they dry clean those every year so that they're clean? Oh, at the, the Masters, they probably have some guy standing there yeah, filtering the air with, by hand yeah. with a well, whisk. At the Masters, they probably have a team of women uh, dry cleaners. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, okay. All right, Willie. Now, uh, Willie's got some gigs coming up, and um, we, we haven't announced our our new, uh, we have a big uh, show coming up that will uh, be much like the one we did in West Virginia, just around the corner. I can't tell you much about it, but I can tell you it's going to be somewhere in, in Iowa. How about that? How about but right that? now, um, this weekend, Willie, uh, on Friday night at the Laugh Factory in Chicago, on the 19th, the Brick Room in Noblesville, and then uh, the story in in Nashville with Jeff Oske on 420, and then 426 and 427. Don't tell comedy in Columbus, Ohio. Is the story in uh, thing on 420? Is there a theme to that show? <laughs> yeah, it's pirate themed. What do you think? It's pod themed. Okay, it's 420. okay, I'm just, just asking. Okay, well, thank you. All right, Willie, thank you. Yeah, it should be fun. And then next week, I want to call in with a quiz. And we're not okay. going to do it today, but I'm just going to tweeze, uh, tease it. It's a quiz, three questions, three answers. And the answers will be high-interest loans, getting stoned, or morning bones. Oh. So get your encyclopedias. Ooh. Get okay. ready to prep. we got to figure right. this one out. All right. All right. Thanks, Willie. Thanks, Willie. Bye. See you guys. <laughs> Did a great job in uh, West Virginia. We look forward to uh, the big Iowa show. Yeah. I'm not sure when I get to announce that, but uh, it, I, I'm just giving you the hint that it's coming. Um, sometime uh, early. Year. I'd rather not participate because uh, there, something's telling me that you're saying stuff you shouldn't be saying already. Just, so just, just teasing just it. Continued on. Just teasing it. Oh, okay. Right now, this portion of the Bomb and Tom Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is all about accessing therapy in a much simpler way. BetterHelp is uh, about accessing therapy online. The way it works is you go online and you'll take a little uh, kind of a quiz, fill out a questionnaire, and then you'll be matched with one of 35,000 licensed therapists. And uh, this can help you help yourself with therapy. Perhaps you're having trouble being around other people. You need just a little bit of work. Well, therapy is the way to go. And now you don't have to get in your car, drive across town, and uh, sit in somebody's office. You can do the whole thing online. And by the way, that means you could do it with a camera on, camera off, like a phone call, or even texting back and forth. So if you're thinking about therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Once again, extraordinarily flexible and convenient because it's done online. And uh, you can do it in the privacy of wherever you want to be at that time. So find your social sweet spot 
by uh, going into some therapy, and BetterHelp is the way to go. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BT Show today. The slash BT Show will knock 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. This portion of the Bob and Tom Show brought to you by BetterHelp. Therapy can help you recharge, and you can recharge BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. Coming right back with Christy Lee at the News Desk. This is the Bob and Tom Show. You don't say we did Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. 
That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. <laughs> nice shoes. What'd you bowl? Hey, Larry, I'm the new guy. That's a great suit. Do they make it for men? Hey. hey. <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. That's awful. Awful entertaining. Essential Morning Radio. Uh, this is Bob and Tom. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Josh Arnold's over there at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Hello. I'm Chick at the orangeinsoles.com sports chair. Here's Tom. Doing some research over here. Is that right? Yeah. You and uh, the boys at the academy? Um, I'm, I'm tr I'll am I'm. get to it in a second. We had an unusual story about some towns in upstate New York um, that are considering, I guess, there's a statewide issue to... to, to uh, I guess there are towns that are allowed to ban the sale of alcohol. Right, but they're trying to get them to be able to sell the alcohol. They want the people to be yeah. able to have it. And, and I misspoke. I mentioned, I said Kentucky. I meant Tennessee. Uh, where the Jack Daniels Distillery is located in Moore County, Tennessee. It is one of the state's dry counties. So it's legal to distill the product, but it can't be purchased there. And I was told Bourbon oh. County, Kentucky, is also a dry county. Interesting. Um, it is interesting. But in, in New York, uh, it, it is, it's legal for the community to have a non-alcohol. But they're, they're thinking of having a statewide measure to take that away. Right. And my question is, can communities do that same thing for cannabis? Can they say, hey, no no uh, sales of that product here? It's, it's an interesting issue, and we'll see what, what happens. Now we turn back to the news desk with Chris Lee. What have you got? Well, I don't know if you know this, but for movie fans, uh, there's a big conference going on right now called CinemaCon, where all the movie theater owners get together and they talk about upcoming films. And it appears that Margot Robbie is going to do for Monopoly what she did for Barbie. That's going to be her next movie. And there also is talk of a new Blair Witch Project for those of you who were fans of the original. so Well, the sequel bombed, right? I know, but... There... Boy, the original movie caught me, man. I thought, well, they found this footage, and I could not believe it. Yeah, hook, line, and sinker for oh, me, too. Right in, right into the theater. 1999. Yep. It seems like yesterday, but nope. It's been yes, that sir. long ago. Monopoly, wow. the movie? Yep. I guess... I don't know. Are they gonna make a, they're making a movie to meet the press, Josh. Oh, oh wow. Really? Yeah, <laughs> exciting. <laughs> every TV show, every game, made into a movie. Scrabble, the movie. Depending movies. on the uh, name recognition. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I wonder if they'll have movie. people dressed up as, like, little iron. <laughs> I mean, how do you make Monopoly into a movie? No, no. I guess you just buy and sell real estate. I mean, I don't know. It, it, the relationship between the game and the movie can be next to nothing. Yes, so, that's true. We'll see. According to doctors, a California teen got a quarter stuck in his vocal cords. Whoa. This report in what? the New England Journal of Medicine reports the 14-year-old went to the ER for hoarseness and difficulty swallowing. Doctors discovered the coin had lodged itself vertically. See what they it did to get it out? Hmm. They hung him upside down and beat his head. Like a vending machine. <laughs> okay, that did, they didn't do that. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that makes sense. It actually. was well. It would have made more sense if I'd finished the story because they said it was vertically in the area between his vocal cords and the trachea. The coin had slid past the vocal cords as if it were a vending machine coin slot. Yeah. Doctors used they had to use long optical forceps to pluck the coin from its spot, where its <laughs> ribbed edges left uh, ulcer, uh, ulcerations in the teen's airway. 
Yikes. Yikes. How did it, did, did he explain how it got there in the first Why place? Why did he have a quarter in his mouth? Yeah, because yeah, he was going to Aldi's. He wanted to get the cart. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, that's my Aldi's quarter. Yeah. I thought you were going to say, hey, that's my Aldi's hunk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all I got. I, yeah. I, uh, that would be terrifying. To swallow a quarter and have it stuck in your throat? Yeah, have your airway potentially blocked if the thing shifts, I would assume. Yeah. Well, but he was fine, except he had a sore throat, right? Horseness, mm-hmm. yeah. And he could breathe. He could right? have difficulty swallowing. Right. I want to go back one story. You said that um, they, they're they making a movie out of Monopoly. Yes, I'm Margot to, Robbie's company. Have they already made a movie out of Operation? No. Uh, or, no. What were we just talking about? Okay. Mm. That'd be a natural. They made a movie out of Battleship. Yep. Oh, that's right. That was and awful. Clue. Clue was good. I like I guess that. fun, yeah. yeah it's real it's fun. Fun little movie. Aren't there like nine different endings or something? There were three, yeah. And you could choose at the theater which one you wanted to go see. <laughs> yeah. well, how'd you it know didn't work. Oh, really? Yeah. People weren't that... They thought, oh, well, people will go three times. I know so when they, they showed it on end. the HBOs or whatever, they Included showed them all, yeah. three end- endings at the end, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, We'll see if it works. But I don't understand how you would know going in which ending... Like you didn't. I, you, so you'd say, I want to oh, see clue A. Oh, or I, I want to so take it, it for clue C. That clue sense, uh, in the library with the... It didn't tell you the ending. No. Okay. You just went and... Yeah. Okay. So it was a roll of the dice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, oh, sorry. Oh. In South Carolina, officials have found about $1.8 billion with a B in an account, but they do not know where the money came from or where it should go. Oh, uh, that's a refund for all of us. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. We're split it up. And uh, we've been wondering where that... Tell them that we've been wondering where that's been. I, I get excited when I find a dollar, let alone... Where was this? Investigative accountants are still trying to untangle the mess. Boy, that's but a room appears... full of nerds. Yeah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. So anyway, so, they, so you're saying the state of Carolina has an extra... South? More, more than a... South Carolina. Uh-huh. More than a billion dollars in extra money? Almost two billion, Here's yeah. an idea. Want to give it back to the taxpayers. <laughs> They're still trying to untangle the mess, but it appears every time the state's books were off balance, money was shifted from somewhere into an account that helped balance it out. Ah, the magical place <laughs> somewhere. Mm-hmm. Legislative leaders and the governor want to uh, wait for a definitive report before tapping into the account. Yeah, come on. That's that's a lot of money to be just... I give every I citizen know. whatever that would be, a few hundred bucks. Yeah, maybe they will. That'd be great for their it's own the, economy. It's the government. You think they well, will I do mean, that? Yeah, but the government throws around money. Think of all the uh, checks we got in the 2000s and uh, stimulus checks. It'd be a good True. way to... So just watch the state legislature vote themselves a raise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of money that, that they don't know where it came from. I am the new billionaire, your governor. That's right. <laughs> All of a sudden, I have no worries. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be governing, by the way, from Tahiti. Uh, funny enough. <laughs> Our sister st- city in Tahiti. Yeah. Do politicians get bonuses for meeting their budgets like a corporation would? They should. I don't know. Wouldn't that be a pretty good incentive? Yeah. Incentive-based pay is always good, you Sure, I think. yeah. Well, I'd be, I don't know, I'm somewhat skeptical. Well, you're you're always well, we, skeptical of everything. We, we got the bridge done. Of course, we don't have any school buses for the kids or books, but oh, I see where's my saying. money? Shifted okay. money from one thing yeah, to another I, to get I, their bonus. The right yeah. rules. Yeah. yeah well, they'd be disobeyed. A new survey out there reveals the most and least attractive hobbies... For Japanese men and women to have. Huh? Mm-hmm. One of the least uh, favorite. Oh, well, I've got a couple, but I'm afraid I don't want to mention them. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> One of the least favorite hobbies in Japan, apparently, normal sex. <laughs> Everything's weird over there. <laughs> Tentacles and schoolgirls and monsters. Vending machines. Yeah. 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 Cartoons and... Uh, yeah, I don't want to see it. Penis. I'd like to have it. Could you please pixelate your mommy parts so I can... <laughs> the hobbies women find attractive for men... And this is from an online dating portal, Matching App University, found 30% find it attractive if uh, the man lists as their hobby gourmet or tabiaruki. <laughs> gourmet oh, implies gourmet. the oh, in-person yeah. has extensive knowledge of specialty cuisine and hidden gym restaurants. Well, Tabariki refers to walking around a neighborhood and sampling the best eating options. Oh, okay. Oh, that's kind of cool. That'd be a fun date. That would be fun. Yeah. Uh, Cooking comes in at 30%. 
Another attractive hobby, watching movies, travel, or listening to music. The hobbies <laughs> men find... <a> tra- <laughs> How weird of them. <laughs> They like travel, movies, and music. Uh, The hobbies men find attractive for women to have were cooking, sex worker, watching movies, (laughs) video games, sure, uh, manga, manga, yeah, they're they're comic books. Yeah, Uh, liking animals. (laughs) (laughs) Why we we. As opposed to kicking them. These are hobbies? <laughs> hobbies. <laughs> what, a, what an important study they did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the hobbies women found unattractive in men, and this is a big one, so it must be a problem, something we don't, I don't know about in Japanese culture. Um, 75% of women found it unattractive if men were interested in slot machines or pachinko. <laughs> They're all over. They're in convenience stores. Are they? Are, yes. It resembles yeah. a pinball machine of some sort? Yeah, they're of. all, yeah. Huh. So is it you 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 put whatever a quarter in and you win a dollar? Or something? Yeah, and they have giant arcades all all over the place, and yeah. Hmm. Oh, not if, so la- ladies women. don't like don't like to see this. No, it's a lot they of just don't. smoking dudes. Uh, okay, <laughs> like, yeah, sitting in there, so I can see why they don't think it's attractive. That's a good name for a band, smoking dudes. <laughs> <laughs> smoking popes, remember that oh. band? Hmm. No, I don't remember oh. them. Hmm. Yeah, most don't. Hmm. Another uh, hobby that they found unattractive: mahjong. Is that the game that you play? Marjong. Marjong. Yeah, Marjong. Mm-hmm. Drinking alcohol, 20%. That's video- my, uh, my ho- hobby. <laughs> hobby. Video games. All right, 15%. so women don't want their men to have fun no. in Japan. And they don't like paintball at all. <laughs> no paintball. No huh? paintball. Mm. The hobbies men found unattractive in women were drinking alcohol, cosmetics, fashion or shopping, video games, and scuba diving. <laughs> oh, I hate when my woman. Uh, how ugly. Hideous. <laughs> Hideous. <laughs> okay. That Lousy is bizarre. Scuba diver. Really Helpful. <laughs> really bizarre. Yeah, you, you can't like marine sports. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I wonder what it would be here. What do you think most women are unattracted by a hobby? I think video games would be up there. Probably. If you're, yeah. if you're addicted to yeah. video games, that's, 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 that's not that's really That's got to be pretty frustrating for... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something to do with an influencer, maybe, or the internet, or the yeah. guys probably hate. Yeah, yeah, why are you always watching her? Right. Why are yeah. you, or why are you always taking pictures to put on your Instagram? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Why are you staring at your phone instead of me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> okay. I bet now, that's way up there. Yeah. yeah. When you're looking on a dating app, do you look at hobbies or do you look at something like if a woman likes fishing, for example, you like fishing. Do you want to fish with a date no, or would you? I do look at the, their hobbies. Like if a woman's hobby is showing her boobs in pictures. Yeah. Uh, That's one that you like. You enjoy. If a woman's hobby is not being fat. <laughs> <laughs> Not being ugly. These are all important. Josh, Josh, you're <laughs> angering America. <laughs> I think people who know me know that uh, I don't mind a bigger my, woman at all. My hobby is the slurping spaghetti. Uh, I think some, some women rubbing might... gravy on my genitals. <laughs> oh, today's poutine day, isn't it? Was that today? Yeah, well, sweet, yeah. Sweet, sweet, sweet. International poutine day. Yes. Sweet, sweet poutine. And what yeah. is poutine again, Josh? It's like fries, gravy, and cheese curds. Usually, it's like disco fries. It's here. delicious. Yeah. It sounds it's like heaven. And was this organized by heart surgeons? <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> crazy. It's crazy good. Is it really? Yeah. I don't know that I could eat. There was a time I could easily, but I don't know if I could eat a an order of poutine. It's just. <laughs> It does take up a plate. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been to a restaurant that served It's pretty tasty. Hmm. (laughs) Uh, Archaeologists say they may have uncovered the oldest stone tools ever found in Europe. Stone tools. Yeah, the ancient stone tools, which were deliberately fashioned from volcanic rock, were initially discovered from a quarry in western Ukraine back in the 70s. A new analysis, though, of the rock surrounding the tools reveals that they are more than one million years old. Yeah, but if they're from Sears, you can still bring them back. Oh, oh that's, that's a hell of a reason. They have a lifetime also. guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> a fine, fine craftsman product. The tools mark the earliest evidence of any type of human in Europe. Researchers said that while it's not certain which early human ancestors fashioned the tools, it may have been Homo erectus. <laughs> Too funny <laughs> to say that. The first species, of course, to walk upright and master the use of fire. I'm guessing those tools probably were borrowed from the cave next door. 
Never returned. Yeah. <laughs> they all, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim, I, I loaned him my, my I loaned him my rock hammer and never got it back. The chipped stone tools were likely used for cutting meat and perhaps scraping animal hides. Oh. Hmm. Both important not back then, yeah. I would imagine. Million years ago. What about uh a wife and club? Was that found? <laughs> From what I understand. <laughs> Where is my wife and club? I'm gonna go out and wife. <laughs> what a weird like trope yeah. that became yeah. clubbing a woman and pulling her by her hair to your <laughs> yeah, cave. Is Sorry. that you don't see that much anymore? Oh, an odd consent. Thankfully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he only used it once, right? He didn't have multiple wives I, I, back then. I did don't you? know. Who knows? I don't know what the story was. <laughs> so on that. strange. I had never heard heard it called a wife and club. Oh no, I don't know that it was called that, but. Uh, yeah, that, I haven't seen that uh, cartoon for a while. Yeah, that was, that's uh, fine. We, do, we don't need that one. No. <laughs> yeah, probably close to true, by the way. <laughs> well, that was, yeah, maybe. Uh, sadly. A wildlife official say a world record coyote that was shot in southern Michigan actually turned out to be a gray wolf. Oh. According to the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, the hunter shot what he thought was a large coyote in Calhoun County while taking part in legal coyote hunting accompanied by a guide. The agency said genetic testing confirmed the animal was a gray wolf, a species that's not been sighted in that part of Michigan since the early 1900s. Man. The taxidermied wolf has now been seized. The DNR is investigating to learn more about the wolf's particular origin and how it traveled vast distances to Michigan's lower peninsula. Brian Rowell, a DNR wildlife biologist who's a large carnivore specialist, said he harbors some doubt that the wolf ended up where it did naturally. So they think they imported it somehow? I feel bad for it. Apparently it was just on its way from Canada to Cedars Point. <laughs> just wanted to uh -huh. ride a few rides. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, the, 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 anyone who lives in northern Michigan knows that the, uh, the the wolves prefer the UP because it's easier access to the fudge. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. yeah you know, you go to Mackinac Island, get some high-quality fudge there. Um, not to mention... A, a, a nice, uh, nice trip over the Mackinac Bridge. Ugh. To be exact. So they're so they're suggesting that somebody <laughs> captured this thing and then let it loose. Yeah. Yeah. That's the suggestion there. Yeah. Or raised or it. Or yeah. Illegally it. had it. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yikes. Okay. Hmm. Um, yeah, maybe they thought it was a cute coyote cub at the time or something, and then found out. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Well, uh, coming up, we have our our history lesson. Some very exciting stuff happening in the world on this date. Um, actually, this might be a good date to do something important. Like what? Oh, because there's not much, so you could really stand out? You uh, mean important, I think so. Important? Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, the birthdays are particularly weak. Um, mm. uh, so uh, I'll do a little more homework and see if I can find out something. A couple of entertainment notes real quick. Aerosmith rescheduled their Peace Out Farewell tour. You'll recall it was postponed after Steven Tyler's vocal injury last year. They'll return to the road September 20th, starting out in Pittsburgh. The Black Crows are the opening act. Uh, Steven Tyler fractured his larynx back in September. Hmm. And the last date of this tour is scheduled for February 26th in Buffalo, New York. And Jerry Cantrell, this is, okay, I got a chuckle out of this. This is from the Associated Press. Not that Jerry Cantrell lost his guitar, but um, he, of Alice in Chains had his guitar stolen out of his car in Los Angeles over the weekend. The blue dress GNL guitar is distinctive because the bag it's in is covered in stickers. Like every other musician I've ever known <laughs> well, who had a guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah, the, on. The guitar was stolen. It's distinguished by having six strings. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cantrell's management is offering wow. a reward for its return. And if you're um, interested or have any information, they're asking you to go to um, Jerry Cantrell's uh, social media. So there well, you go. What's a drag? Yeah, that is hope, drag. Hope, hope they find hope they find that guitar. Remember, they found Peter Frampton's. They oh, found shit. Paul McCartney's. Yeah, so it's Years out there. It's, it's out there somewhere. Yeah. Well, let's hope they find it soon. Right now, it's not going to happen to Chick's house. You know why? Why? It's because of the uh, uh, presence of Simply Safe. That's right. Simply Safe named best home security system of 2024 by U.S. News and World Report and Newsweek awarded Simply Safe best customer service in home security. Sensors from Simply Safe. There are break-in sensors, fires, floods, and more indoor and outdoor high-definition cameras to keep watch day and night. It's all backed by 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. And Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can even help stop crime in real time. They can speak to intruders through the wireless indoor camera, warning them that they're being recorded and police are on the way. And Simply Safe has no contact, uh, no contract, a 60-day money-back 
guarantee. Try Simply Safe risk free, and if you don't love it, send the system back for a full refund. Simply Safe has given us and many Bob and Tom Show listeners real peace of mind. We want you to have it too. Get 20% off any new Simply Safe system, and you can sign up for Fast Protect monitoring. All you have to do is visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. Read the reviews. People love Simply Safe. When we come back, it's Today in History. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Add to or continue the conversation. Check out the Bob and Tom Show on Facebook. Get the link at Bob and Hi, everybody. Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom Show. Miss some of the show? Become a Bob and Tom VIP and subscribe to the audio and video podcasts. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. Our guest in the studio is comedian Bert Kreischer. And uh, Bert is um, a veteran of the world of the party. <laughs> he was uh, voted the number one party animal in the country by Rolling Stone magazine. Quite uh, an honor. Many yeah, years ago, honor. Mm -hmm. and uh, you carry the mantle to this day. Yeah, you're now the. I guess you'd be the what uh, party animal uh, ex officio. What would the uh, uh, what I is the party title? animal cum laude guru? Maybe mm -hmm. guru to young boys. Could probably be a guru. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd be uh, maybe good not. No, you, you you said you have two young daughters. Yeah, which is pointless because I have no advice for little girls. Uh -huh. Do you have advice for? Young men. I have tons of advice for young men. Are you really? Me? Yeah. yeah. It's just college age men going yeah. to. Well, it's like it's like well, you have a, you have sons, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, and you know all the things. Do you have any girls? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. see, and you got nothing to t to tell a little girl. Mm -hmm. Well, so far they they're in charge. They know what's going on. So. Yeah. I said uh, I remember the first night we got my daughter, or not got her, but had her, or you know whatever. <laughs> I know. Right. And she was crying real bad, and the nurse was like. Um, the nurse goes, comes in, and she's, you know, and wrapped up like a joint in a box. Uh -huh. right. I guess. That's what yeah, they, I yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, mm. the nurse comes in, and she, you are well, that's party. what I thought it was. You are, <laughs> you are a party animal, I think. And she was like, uh, she was like, let's, uh, what do you, what have you done? I was like, nothing. Mm -hmm. She goes, what are you, what are you going to do? I was like, I'll put a towel over her face and cut the oxygen in half. I don't know, nothing. <laughs> and she goes, here's what you do. Take her head, put it by your heart, take your pinky, place it on her lower lip. And allow her to draw it in. That'll calm her down. Uh -huh. So I do it. And sure enough, as soon as I put it on her lower lip, my daughter draws it in. Like she's trying to rip the nail off. Just. <laughs> I'm like, we're stopping this tonight. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not raising a daughter where that is her coping mechanism. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, Every time she gets a little spook. Yeah. Just, Wah! you know, no, thank you. <laughs> but I was very, I was massively un unprepared for girls. I just didn't know. I never even listened to women. Mm. I literally. Literally, I, the only advice I got, like, and this uh, for boys, mm -hmm. you ever get into a fight with a girl? This works every time. I did this with my wife. Twelve words. You are right. I am wrong. I love you, honey. You win, and you squash it. Really? You take her in your arms, you carry her into the bedroom, and you cuddle like a team. Mm. Like a, like a unified, like a coalition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scratch her back and let her go to sleep together, happy. She won. Mm -hmm. And that night while she's sleeping, <laughs> cut her hair. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot, just uh, a little just bit a so lot. you know you won. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice for a boy, uh, unapplicable for a girl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bert Kreischer's our guest. I'm glad we have this on tape because oh, you're going to be dead God. very soon, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm looking used uh, to that as evidence, I think. Yeah, they're oh. gonna be, you're going to be uh, yeah. wheeled, out of, your, you wheeled out of your own home in a gurney. <laughs> no, I have no idea. No. It's forever, right? What am I counting the days for? You think guys doing life? prison count the days? I don't think so. <laughs> you do your time. I'll do mine. <laughs> oh, no, I got out. Uh, you got out? Uh, yeah. got out. I escaped. <laughs> oh, uh, ow. Oh, back. Oh. oh, hey, Josh. What's wrong? And my back is sore. My legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look, nothing. Ah. Uh. Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. All see right. you later, buddy. Give it a... Oh.
Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh! Josh! Did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific! <laughs> See you a... later. <laughs> orange insoles. Feel better, do more. Van thing. I the bumper stickers on that'll be horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. my orphan child is an honor student. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully done. Uh -huh. done Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. No matter how hard I try, can't keep my hands off my face. <laughs> Bob and Tom Radio. Radio. We have uh, we have comedian Eric Hunter here with us. Eric, I'm guessing just uh, I don't know. You're kind of a pasty guy. <laughs> well, guessing. you know, hey, great great to see you, Eric. Always a pleasure. Well, you know, Eric Eric looks so pale hey, Eric, because uh -huh. he, he's had a. Didn't you have a family? We have coupons to a spa. <laughs> he had a family. You know, he had. He recently had a family tragedy. Is, uh, he did? His grandmother. Oh, uh, it was very sad. Yeah. yeah. What happened? Yeah. Grams, uh, Grams passed away. Oh, no. Uh, uh, it was actually a year and a half ago. Yeah. Really? But she was 97 uh, years old. Well, that's a good old. full life. Yeah, she... She passed away after a lengthy battle with a uh, bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn her luck. Yeah. Snuck into the tent, you know. Oh, wow. ah. <laughs> you know, usually the bear wins. Yeah. I'll bet she put up a hell of a struggle, though. <laughs> she fought for a while, but... Uh... <laughs> Feisty old lady. Oh, yeah. Told her not to They're hang food in the tent. Don't hang food up. in the tent, uh, Grams. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Lord Coretta's a fine young comedian. Uh, are you a health yeah. guy? You run, you look very slender. And uh, I'm not a, a big health guy, although I'm healthy. I just uh, had a complete physical, and uh, unfortunately, I'm at that age where you get the real intense physical. No, yeah. yeah. You know, I hope I'm not sharing too much, but mm -mm. the doctor actually stuck a camera in my rectum. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't part of any procedure. He just suspected that his nurse was stealing from him. <laughs> hey, this is Henry Phillips, and you're listening to Bob and 16. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, Tom. How are you, buddy? Well, I, I feel uh, that it's important right now to announce the fact that we have yet to hear the Ace Cosby joke of the day. Oh. And therefore, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen... Uh, what do you get when you cross uh, a brown chicken and a brown cow? Uh huh. What? Uh. Brown chicken cow cow. <laughs> no. That no, that's not what you get. Not what you get. Yeah. No, yeah. The brown chicken brown cow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not brown chicken. Cow. I like when he gets so excited. Cow, cow. <laughs> so excited for the bunch. Cow 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 cow. Brown chicken brown cow. <laughs> What was that? Remember the cats and everybody was amazed that the commercial from Meow Mix, the chow, 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 and they oh, dance back yes. and forth. Yes. People, yes. Up, people lost their minds for dancing cats. Yes, they and they were just backing up the video. <laughs> yeah, Pre-internet now, at least, yeah, that's, uh, that could be easily you done. Can't, you can't it's swing everywhere. a dead cat without hitting uh, something like that. Uh, <laughs> time now for today. In history, I think Napoleon was asked today to leave and not come back. After being it's, repeatedly warned, yeah, this, this this is a good day to do something yeah, important or have a birthday because it's yeah. it's. I gotta be honest with you, not a big day in history. Property was Napoleon value. set to exile? Yeah, on property values on Elba went way up. When he, when he got, there. <laughs> yeah. he got that. I'm yeah. not going for him. Oh boy, this is just that didn't sound like a terrible exile to me. Hey, why don't you go to this gorgeous island? Yeah, Elba's gorgeous, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you know, you. He, he when he got there, it was really cramped. So, like, hey, give me some elbow room. Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh. uh. Suppose there's a bar there called the Elbow Room. The Elbow Room? Mm. Yeah, they serve Elbow Toast. Okay, <laughs> so there we go. We could do this all day. This is better than what I Elba got. Elbow Macaroni. <laughs> hey, you're right. Yeah, Napoleon abdicated the throne and uh, went to Elba on this date in 18, uh, 1814. Thank you, Jim. Have you watched the uh, the Phoenix, the Joaquin movie yet? No. Oh, uh, Napoleon? A member yeah. of our, Mike Mark said it's uh, great. It's great. Okay. So... I don't know. It looks real dry to me, but I'll... They always huh. do, don't they, those yeah. historical dramas? And standing and staring in the hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Speaking of English. Way, he's way too tall, right? Um. <laughs> but I don't guess Napoleon was that short, evidently. Oh, really? That's the yeah. deal, yeah. Uh, how about the, oh, here we go. Apollo 13 launched. And oh, okay. Great movie. I love that movie. Chick Great does not. So that's one of the ones you don't care for. I Either it. do I like it and just act like I don't like it. <laughs> okay, okay. I th I find it to be a to great movie. To Ron Howard's name or do I? It's one of movie. those I can't pass up. If it's on, I'm watching. Really? Yes. Um, okay. the, in 1976, this is interesting. The Kevin first Kevin. Apple computer released by the Steves. Hmm. The first one? Yeah, created Remember by Steve Wozniak. Remember the ones that were different colored uh, backs? Remember yeah. the orange the, uh, and blue yes. and the yeah. weird yeah. Sort of yes. big VTRs? Yep. Yeah. 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 Thought really we were weird. staring right at the future, didn't we? Yeah, oh, we did. Man, <laughs> it's never going to get any better <laughs> right, than this. Right. Although yeah. I think they've now reached the point. Uh, I saw an ad for a TV set and it's, you know, whatever, it's half an inch thick. Well, if you sign your wall, what's the difference between half an inch thick and three quarters of an inch thick? It doesn't stick out as far. Well, it's a big deal. <laughs> I mean, not really. Christy is right. It doesn't stick out as far. No, when, it was, when it was a giant it cube. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's like a half inch less. I think. A quarter. But I, I, think, I don't a think it's that big of a deal. I don't. No. I mean, the ad for this television, literally, it's just chosen from the side and it goes, whatever, half inch thick. You can just use a smaller nail. I mean, it, they're pretty See, small. See, that's now. what they need to do. They need to find out a way to put them on the wall easier than they Without have. having to drill into the studs. On so that big far. mounting yeah. thing. Yeah, right. and, yeah. Yeah. Dude, whoever figures that out. Yeah. Listen, you, and, you unpack and, the TV and just put they, it on. They, they, they have it. Like it's, Velcro? It's, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, it's an anti-gravity ray. The problem is it radiates the viewers. Oh! <laughs> You can see, well, your, you can see your bones after a couple of days. <laughs> is that right? Okay, let's see. What else is going on? Um, okay, never heard of him. But name, maybe we have. Uh, born in 1960, Jeremy Clarkson. Never heard of that person. Never heard of him. <laughs> I think he's the guy in the English version of Top Gear, which is, you know. Oh, oh, oh I know who he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fans. Okay. Uh, this is even worse. Wow. Uh, you are reaching. Trisha Helfer. Oh, yeah, she's in she's a Battlestar. Yeah, Battlestar Galactic. She's number six. She was in Luther, too. Okay. All right. Here's somebody you know that's birthdays today. Um, uh, Jack Woodlock, my ex-husband. So happy birthday, Woody. Okay. Oh, yeah. Very good, very good. How about and, that? Uh, he could get on this list. <laughs> I, uh, it's just a, I mean, there's a, You don't know anyone on the list. It's really, really weak. Yeah, um, but you're, you have, uh, my mom's birthday is April 15th. Do you want to uh, just uh, say happy birthday to her today and on the 15th? Okay, here we go. Got so a good one. Andy's nope. <laughs> Got a good one. 1935, Richard Berry. Pat? Who's that? Uh, Louis Louis. The, the writer of the song, Louis Louis. He was born in Extension, Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name huh? of the town. Of course, it's on the outskirts. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. I didn't they... think this could get any weirder. <laughs> Extension, Louisiana. Yeah, yeah. He he wrote. He he did not have the big hit with Louis Louis. His was. Oh, here we go. I've heard of her. Louise Lasser, actress. Oh yeah. Mm. Mary oh, Hartman. Course. Mary Hartman. Yeah. Married yeah. to Woody Allen. For Woody a while. Allen's tribe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Boy, these these get really obscure. Let's try to get some more obscure than Richard Berry. Uh. Yeah. Wow. I mean, there's just nothing. Uh, right. Bill Irwin, the actor from My Blue Heaven. He's Bill Irwin oh, is he's terrific. He's yeah, he's I'm not saying black, he's not he's terrific. No, no, you and you would recognize him in a heart. He was in the um, video for uh, Don't Worry, Be Happy. He's kind of a he's a famous clown. Actor. Yes, he's a, yeah. he is a famous clown. You'd he enjoy is? Yeah. yeah, yeah, real good. Yeah, no, 1951, Jim Holton, <laughs> soccer defender. I mean, I'm telling you, if this today's your birthday, do something even hey, mildly. Spe interesting. Speaking of obscure. I, I was looking at myself in the mirror this morning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're obscure. Do, yeah. Am I starting to resemble Victor French from Highway to Heaven, the human? <laughs> oh, a little bit. <laughs> Maybe a Michael little. Landon's sidekick yeah, in Highway yeah. to Heaven. A little bit. Get you a ball cap. <laughs> right. A ball. That, that's your Halloween outfit. I could yeah. go as Victor French. <laughs> yeah. He has the same coloring in his beard, I He has some different yeah. glasses. You could do a really good Allen Ginsberg. Yeah, and two people, uh, I know, I know Kevin Nealon and Frank Caliendo both said, uh, Pat, who do you think? David Cross. Yeah, they both said I look like David Cross, so. You know I, who I'm, I think I'm a you look like? Who? 
the fabulous Josh Arnold. I don't know if oh, you've really? heard of him. He's so funny. <laughs> He's so handsome. But less gay. I, I, am I a less gay, yeah. Josh Arnold? Yeah. Okay. Things we learned today and on the show, uh, I do. You know what I like on my grilled cheese? What? Hamburger. <laughs> Damn right. Oh, people are sending us grilled cheese stories now. So many, yeah. We'll get to them tomorrow. Uh, some janitor hung his own painting in a modern art museum in Munich, Germany, and didn't tell anybody, and no one, nobody noticed. Folk hero, I consider him. Uh, Christy Lee didn't eat grilled cheese sandwiches as a kid. Nope. She didn't care for cheese. Didn't Apparently that was the it. one thing. Yeah, and no, Josh, I was uh, just... wow. <laughs> to this day, I think Josh, <laughs> rough in here. Josh offers his uh, all of his dates a bowl of soup and a candy bar. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's uh, that's absolutely that's absolutely a dinner. Uh, that eat, is a great eat, eat quick. Joke. Eat, eat, eat quick, toots. I ain't paying you to chow down. Yeah. And get used to the word toots. That's how I'll address you. Uh, every cherry tree in Washington, D.C. has a hidden microphone in it, according to Josh. That's absolutely true. Yeah, That's they're making Big sure. Brothers always. <laughs> Japanese are watching out for us. Ed Septic did make a pitch to Shark Tank today on the show. A teeth whitening toilet bowl cleaner. Two, two, two uh, products in one, is what he said. <laughs> Uh, Al Jackson gets his legal weed from a former Boston Market drive through <laughs> evidently. I did not, uh, I did not know that. Happy birthday, Wendell Suckow. <laughs> <laughs> World Championship loser. Wow. From Marquette, Michigan. See, there you go. There's a He's cool guy. A loser. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, with a name like Suckow, you know you've got to be good at something. Yeah, because you've been teased yeah. your whole yeah, life. Yeah, you've been tortured your whole life. Well, congratulations, Wendell. You're our favorite birthday guy today. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Even though we're not too much to look at, you can also watch the show on our YouTube channel.